gentlemen, start your engine. Three engines fire to life, and the excitement that is Talladega is about to happen. Talladega, where it's not always easy to follow the rules and the signs posted around the racetrack. Talladega, the tendency is to get to the highest point to watch the action, and there isn't a seat to be had anywhere here today as the Winston Select 500 is about to go. ESPN Speed World welcomes you live to Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama and the Winston Select 500 for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. It is a beautiful day here in Talladega. The short track season is over, and here are the points leaders. We told you before the short track season that positions would change, and indeed we have a new points leader in Dale Earnhardt. Jeff Gordon jumped seven positions during the short track season. However, Bill Elliott and Ricky Rudd dropped three positions during the short track season. But now we're at Talladega where the speeds are over 200 miles an hour, but the excitement is just as great. We talked last week before Martinsville, Ned, about how patience was the key there. What's the key to winning here at Talladega? Well, certainly patience are important here, too, Bob. You can't afford to make any radical moves out there, but drafting is the key. We've talked about how one car can draft another one, even though he might be two or three miles an hour slower in qualifying. We're going to see that all day long. We're going to see a lot of cars running together, and sometimes we see some bumping when we see that many cars running together. Let's check on the latest stories from Pit Road. First, Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bob, the stands are packed and so are the pits, but calculations now begin in earnest here in the pits. I'm in Ernie Irvin, our pole sitter's pit, and behind me, Larry McReynolds beginning to calculate what the fuel mileage will be today for the fours. Now, look here. It's a 188-lap race. You count backwards. 188, that's a checkered flag. Minus 55 laps. That's what they should be able to run. That means they stop on lap 133. Minus 55, lap 78. Minus 55, lap 23. That's the best case scenario if they can make it 55. Everyone calculating in the pits. For more, let's go to Bill Weber. Well, I'm standing here between the pits of Ken Schrader and Ward Burton. If I look down that way, I can't even see the finish line. It's 500 miles away, but remember, it's further down pit road. One other stat. They've run a little over 100 races here at, uh, check that, about 53 races here at Talladega. 26 of them have been won from the front row. That's 49%. So if you have Yates in the pool, you might be in pretty good shape. To my partner, John Kernan. Daryl Walter needed a champion's provisional to get into this race. Talk to Jeff Hammond, his team manager. Daryl and he have won a lot of races over the years, some championships this morning. And Jeff told me they have gone and changed engines. They have gotten an engine from the 44 crew, a Ron Hutter engine. And yesterday afternoon in practice, Daryl was at least a second faster. So even though he's starting shotgun on the field, old DW has a smile on his face as he rolls out there on the racetrack. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's race. 
It's Ernie Irvin on the pole at 192.8 miles an hour with Dale Jarrett, who's going for the Winston Million. $100,000 if he can win here today. If he wins three of the four, he wins the million. Second row in today's race will be Jeremy Mayfield and Sterling Marlin. Jeremy with his best start after his best finish last week. The third row, Ted Musgrave and Mike Skinner. Row number five, and four rather, is Jeff Purvis and Robert Presley. In the fifth row, Jeff Burton and Johnny Benson, the rookie. Defending Winston Cup champion Jeff Gordon starts 11th alongside Derek Cope. Then look the Labonte brothers in row number seven, Terry and Bobby. And as you look at the rest of the starting lineup, we'll remind you the race is 188 laps long. They're racing on corners banked at 33 degrees and never a dull moment at Talladega. No, they can run very easily two and even sometimes three or four breast abreast uh, on these turns, Bob. Even though they like to stay in uh, at least two single lines, if possible, but occasionally we'll see them get three wide. There's Michael Waltrip starting back there in the 16th row. He's anxious to get up towards the front. Of course, all these guys are that are starting back there. I tell you that Benny Parsons is a little under the weather and uh, will not be with us here this afternoon. But we invite you to stay tuned for what is always one of the most exciting races of the year. There you see the provisional starters, including Mike Wallace and Brett Bodine and Daryl Waltrip with the former champions provisional, giving us 43 cars to take the green flag in just a moment. Seven of today's top ten starters have never won a NASCAR Winston Cup race, and this is certainly a racetrack that we have seen many first-time winners at, and we could see another today. We dedicate this race to the president of ARCA, Bob Loga, who died yesterday afternoon from injuries suffered in a traffic accident, a highway accident, near the Speedway on Friday. comes down looking for green the Winston select 500 is on takes a while to get these restrictor plate motors wound up in fact it takes more than a lap but they're already winding up pretty good Jerry has nobody up on the outside there to grab with him. Sterling Marlin didn't get off to a very good start there. With those two Rocket Dicks forward running neck and neck into turn three. Just like they were when they crossed the starting line, they're still side by side as they head for the third and fourth turns. Jeremy Mayfield is tucked right in behind Ernie Irvin down low. Sterling Marlin makes a three wide at the line, and I have no idea. I think it was Sterling that led it. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Look at Earnhardt in the middle, Ned. Wow, that's not a place you want to be this early in the race, but if anybody can handle that situation, he can. He might have an opportunity there to get out in front of Robert Presley, but he didn't. No, it didn't quite work for him. So Earnhardt is in the middle of a two by two. Now he ducks in the low line and gets behind and just tries to get in front of Terry Lamar, of, uh, Jeff Gordon, but can't do that either. And here's the view from Mark Martin's roof camp. Or look at the cars in front of him. Of course, Mark started back in 37th position. <laughs> two by two this time down the line. Marlin and Ernie Irvin side by side, and Sterling has the advantage again, but it's just inches. And by inches, he goes out in front now. Dale Jarrett sort of pushed Marlin into that first turn. Not, not literally pushing, they were not touching, but the draft certainly helps the draft. The car behind you helps the car in front. Now we have two by two as Earnhardt was able to get in front of Jeff Gordon. Meanwhile, down low, we see Jeff Burton who makes it three wide. Puts Earnhardt back in the middle again. Riding with Dale Jarrett. 
And he passes Sterling Mall and takes the lead. Jared is going to lead lap number three. Ernie Irvin second already. Jeremy Mayfield's car, which is the third one down on the bottom line, has a donut on the side of his car. He's had contact with somebody out there already. This is Ken Schrader's in-car camera. Again, we see three wide racing as Earnhardt has dropped to the inside to make it three wide. And there you see Jeff Burton also down low. Well, that makes me nervous every time we see cars three wide because that guy in the middle, he, he's sort of a sitting duck down there. But lots of, lots of that going on here today. Earnhardt. Look at Earnhardt making yep. a move. Three deep here. Earnhardt's going to take Jeff Gordon with him. They're going to put... Jeremy Mayfield in the middle, and it hasn't taken long for Dale Earnhardt to come forward. He's up to fourth right now. That's his teammate, Mike Skinner, in the 31 car, up above Jeff Gordon. So Mike Skinner still hanging in there in the sixth position where he started. Look at this, Ned. Wow. They're using every inch of the backstretch. You get a little momentum coming off the turn. Three, four wide. There are four wide. Wow, look at this. Be careful, guys, is all I can say. Bill Elliott way up high. Boy, Benny would love to be here to watch this. This is where he loves to watch a race from. And again, BP is a little under the weather. The car in trouble. Jimmy Spencer. And he goes down the track. Everybody gets by that as he went down across the track, but... It's a two-car accident. The other machine involved would be the 75 of Morgan Shepard. Morgan, when Spencer got sideways, Morgan could not go anywhere. And he just rode along with him. Until they came to, got up into the wall. We need a set of tires. Let's fuel it up also. Listening to Morgan Shepard's radio. Spencer caused that whole damn deal down there. Morgan, we're going to get back in this race. We need the points, buddy. Let's have a positive attitude. Morgan, you got any oil pressure? I doubt it. There's oil all over the windshield. You can see nothing. Oh, that's a tough break. And from Morgan Shepard's perspective, we'll see how this incident unfolded. Thing riding along pretty good there. And here comes Spencer, the yellow car, coming in there, and he touches. Was that Richie Craven's yeah. car that uh -huh. he touched? And it just shot him right into the outside wall, and Morgan was there and had nowhere to go. We keep trying to clear the lens, and it won't cleanse because of so much uh, oil that was put down by this. Now, here's a perspective. That's Jimmy Spencer there in the middle as they come through the trioval. Now, watch. He's going to slide up and make contact with Richie, Ricky Craven. Well, Craven they, came down a little yep. bit as he started off that turn, not knowing that Spencer was there, and they made contact, and it shot Spencer up towards the outside wall, and Morgan Shepard was there, just simply nowhere to go. Fortunately, no other car involved, just Jimmy Spencer and Morgan Shepard. Spencer's car has come to a rest very close to the start-finish line down here. Here's Bill Weber. Well, I'm down in their pitch. Roy Selberg's talking to one of the race officials. As you can see, the crew's already gone back to the garage. They considered this their magic car. In fact, that's what Troy told me this morning. It's run seven super speedway races. It's led in every race. Not today. It's... An early out for both Spencer and Morgan Shepard. We'll see if they can get their cars repaired and back in the race. But right now, we are under caution here at Talladega with six of 188 laps completed. Okay.
ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston Select 500 from Talladega is being brought to you by the all-new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. By Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Summer Games. This Bud's for you. And by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards of engine protection. Caution on the racetrack, Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by with Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy, a tough start for you at Talladega. What happened out there? Oh, just uh, should start 38th place. You know, that's the first thing. We just didn't qualify really well at all. And, uh, man, we had a strong race car. And uh, I probably wasn't as patient as I should have been. But I got pinched off, you know. I'm not mad at anybody for it. It's just racing. And uh, it's typical Talladega, you know. Uh, thank the Lord nobody got hurt. Smoke and Joe's team. I really feel bad for him because they knew we had a real good race car. Just the car never qualified well, but always ran well here. Had two top tens last year here. That's life, and uh, we gathered up and tried to go to Sonoma next week. You did a heck of a job to hang on to the race car when it got sideways out there. Yeah, Jerry, I'll, I'll tell you, and I tried to keep it up as long as I could, and uh, then it got it its own oil, it busted the oil cooler, and it started to come back across the racetrack, and uh, I just thank everybody what it was watching, and I didn't get hit, you know, and... Uh, then I got it straightened out again because it could have come back up the racetrack, and I will tap myself on the back for that. I was. I appreciate you saying that, but I shouldn't have even been in that deal, and I won't pat myself on the back for that one. Jimmy Spencer frustrated and headed back to the garage area where the crew is already waiting to meet him. They're going to try to fix the car and somehow get him back out. Let's go to Bill Weber. Sterling Marlin made an early pit stop. His car was running hot. Tony Clover just told me too much tape on the front. They simply wanted to bring him in, take the tape off, put some water in there, top off with fuel, get it fixed right now so they don't have to worry about it later. Jeremy Mayfield does indeed have a donut. I asked crew chief Tony Furr who delivered that. He said, I don't know, it's just the same problem we had at Martinsville. No respect. Don't worry, we're going to get back to the front. That's something these guys ran into. They did have a great race on the short track at Martinsville, but because Jeremy so young doesn't have a lot of experience they're not getting the respect they think they deserve they plan to earn it here today not only was sterling marlin in several others made pit stops during this caution period just to top off the fuel tanks we'll take another break during this caution and be back with more from talladega Blowing right square on my back. I know. That's okay. No. Uh, how can we? I thought maybe that would deflect it, but maybe it's doing more harm than good. Okay. Much better. That's very ingenious. <laughs> Got it.
we are still under caution here at Talladega. Good to see that Jacques Villeneuve has won his first Formula One race. We're at Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Jimmy Spencer and Morgan Shepard involved in an early crash. We've talked to Jimmy. Now let's talk to Morgan. Here's John. Well, Bob, as we've said earlier, a lot of packs of cars with something happens. You don't have anywhere to go, and apparently that's what happened to Morgan Shepard. Could you see it all develop in front of you, Morgan? Well, uh, all I know is a couple cars got together, and uh, the twin three car came across in front of me. And uh, just very, you know, it's, it's hard. Our Remington Thunderbird ran so good in practice yesterday, and we finished third and fourth two races last year, and I uh, felt like we had a good shot at today car the crew's working to try and get you back out there cutting the fenders off right now a lot of oil all over the windshield when they brought it in let's go out to pit road and dr jerry punch hey john this caution a break for rick mass your buddy from virginia the hooters pontiac felt a vibration that came down pit road thought maybe just to take a rubber out of the right rear but turns out they had run over some debris and punctured a right rear tire so they came in and changed all four so a break for mass maybe that young man's luck has changed bob Several went in for pit stops. We'll uh, list those for you. Joe Nemechek, uh, Mast, Martin, Kyle Petty, Mike and Kenny Wallace, Darrell Waltrip, Elton Sawyer, Brett Bodine all were in during this caution, which was a little lengthier than it could have been because of oil on the track. Getting set for the restart. That was a pretty big move by the Sterling Marlin crew to bring the car right, back. Cars coming off. It has to go all the way to the rear. John Curry. In the middle of Let's go to Bill Weber quickly. Okay, as Ned was saying, the four got fuel. The 88 thought they had right side damage. They asked Ernie Irvin to come up and take a look. Ernie said it was okay. Some left side damage on the 41 car of Ricky Craven. His crew chief, Charlie Presley, believes he'll be okay. Green about to come back out of Talladega. The race resumes. Green is flying as the cars go through the uh, oil drive. Well, we see the Yates cars one and two. The Childress cars are three and four as they head for the 33 degrees of banking once again. And as you indicated, Ned, it takes a little bit for these engines to get up to speed. Yeah, they're looking at uh, 450, 460 horsepower as opposed to the unrestricted engines, which are probably 750 horsepower. So it takes them a little more than a lap. In fact, uh, at the restricted plate tracks, they give them two laps in qualifying so that they can, can get all of the speed out of the car that the car is capable of. to one compression engines and a restrictor plate at 29.30 seconds. Three wide once again into corner number one. Jeff Burton down low. Now he sneaks up ahead of Rusty Wallace. Boy, Rusty covered that plate very quickly and Earnhardt is past Ernie Irvin. Here comes the car number 31 also of Mike Skinner. Earnhardt now that becomes a Dale and Dale show here early in the race. And here's Gordon coming down on the inside trying to take over third. Doesn't have much help down there on the bottom, but he was still able to sweep around and go into third. So now it's Jarrett Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon. Ernie Irvin sort of caught on the outside there. Needs a little drafting help. Well, that uh, single file restart separated things for a little bit and broke up those three and four wide scenes that we saw. But now they're beginning to come back already again. This is from Ted Musgraves on board perspective. That's Terry Labonte running to his right. Jeff Purvis up ahead. Jeremy Mayfield to his right now. Jeremy had dropped back to 11, but now he's, uh, he's picking back up, got back up in the top 10. Here's a Napa field summary. The Numbers in parentheses indicate where they started. The first three in points are the first three on the racetrack. It looked like for a moment that, that Jared Earnhardt and Gordon might be able to pull away. And here's Earnhardt going for the lead. But the other, others caught up to him very quickly. And they're sitting up once a couple cars decide they want to team up and go by you and everybody's going by Dale Jarrett there right now. Yeah, Jarrett got no help there and everybody going by him, including Jeff Gordon, 
Bernie Irvin, here's Mike Skinner to the inside. And there's Terry Labonte right behind Dale Perry. Well, he pulls up there and gives Jared a little bit of help, which might let him go, and he does let him go on by Mike Skinner. Jeremy Mayfield is right behind Mike Skinner, forming the line behind Mike. Meanwhile, the 37 car, John Andretti, is on the move. And Rusty Wallace also. Here we are again with those three and four wide battles. Andretti has moved to 21st. Rusty's up to 18th. And John Andretti is right in the middle of the big mess down there in turn four. He still is foot on the floorboard. There's Ward Burton in the NBA car down on the inside of John Andretti. Front. Meanwhile, it is still Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon running nose to tail. Ernie Irvin, then side by side, we had Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte. And here comes Jeremy Mayfield along with Mike Skinner. And Mayfield impressive here in the early going. Yeah, he got shuffled back there in the early going. Dropped back to his levels, but now back up there fighting for a top five. As if Jerry gets loose. Dale Jarrett got very loose going into turn three there, but it looks like he was able to get it back in, but he lost some position. Wow, a nice save here. I didn't see it. Let's uh, find out what happened. And you see a lot of cars going by Dale. He's wondering if maybe he has a tire going down. I'm sure that he's resting, he's riding sort of easy there right now just to see how things going to feel going into this next turn. like he went through there okay but he's, he's dropped back considerably in the field and if the car is loose it's going to be looser yet in this big pack of cars five cars have broken away somewhat from the rest of the field jeremy mayfield and Derek coper running side by side as are ricky rudd and bobby labonte and john andretti behind bobby at the top of the track again and what happened to Dale Jarrett that he got loose and lost several positions right there uh, when when Jeremy Mayfield went up there it took the air off his yep. boiler and just pulled it around a little bit that must be a scary feeling when all of a sudden there is no air on your rear spoiler the thing that yep. keeps the rear end of the car down on the racetrack really yeah you can spin a car out and not touch it on this racetrack if you get just in the right position and that was almost the right position there Looking back on Wally Dolan back. Here's more from Bill Weber. Ned and uh, Bob, they were on the wall here waiting to change a tire on Dale Jarrett's car, but you hit it right on, Ned. It was the air off the 98 car. His spotter called down to DJ and told him it's just the air off the 98 car. It loosened you up. You're all right, buddy. But boy, what a tremendous setback, Ned. And again, it just goes to show you how a very instant when something goes wrong, and look how many positions he has lost. Back in 23rd position. Up front, it is Dale Earnhardt leading the Winston Select 500. Ernie Irvin is running second, and Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and Mike Skinner. 19 laps have been completed. We'll take a break and be right back.
Cowboys are on the lead draft as you rejoin us here at the Winston Select 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. New leader since we uh, took the commercial break. Ernie Irvin has gone to the front, putting Dale Earnhardt, who will celebrate his 45th birthday tomorrow, back in second position. Jeff Gordon running behind Dale. And here's how Ernie Irvin took the lead away from the seven-time champion. He was sitting there in the... In the middle of those two Chevrolets pulled out going into turn one. Jeff Gordon goes with him and helps Ernie to draft right on past Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt might have had to back off just a little bit right there. And Gordon comes on around, gets on the inside, but then Earnhardt momentum carries him on back up there, so he remained in second place. There is the second pack led by Sterling Marlin. Remember last year he had trouble and dropped way back. And Sterling Marlin helped in the late going Jeff Gordon and Morgan Shepard to uh, get up to the leaders to run with him. That was a very interesting situation last year. Yes, it really was. And he's helping this pack of cars to come up towards the front too. Mark Martin hanging on tight there. Brent Bodine right there with him. Joe Nemechek and Rick Bass. And they are catching the front pack of cars. This is about 30th on back. Sterling Marlin running in 30th position. Brett Bodine currently running in 31st position right now. Brett started in 41st position, so he's 49th 10 positions. And the car is drafting well. He told us at dinner last night that he had a good drafting race car. Yeah, he's doing a, doing a good job coming up to there. In fact, they, they are running a little bit faster right now than the leaders are. There are six cars in the lead draft that have sort of broken away from another pack, but this this crew that we're watching here right now is definitely gaining on that other pack of cars. On the second pack of cars, I should say. Down the long back stretch here at Talladega, and you got a wall of 33 degrees of banking staring you right in the face. But when you get there, it flattens out when you're running at 190 plus miles an hour. And up front, again, the positions change as Earnhardt slips back to four spot. Irvin retains the lead. Gordon and Terry Lamonti second and third. Here's Michael Waltrip, who is in 15th position, and Bill Elliott is up ahead. Waltrip started 31st, and a lead change here as Jeff Gordon goes to the bottom and brings Terry Labonte along with him, and Ernie Irvin goes from first to third. And here comes the four car. Boy, he's got that momentum going. He caught that back of cars. And uh oh, he had to back off there. Dave Marcus pulled down in front of him. He really had some momentum going there, Bob. But he had to back off just momentarily. He'll let him uh, scatter out there just a little bit, and he'll still continue on towards the front. We were watching a pretty good battle here between the 94 of Ellie and the 21 of uh, Michael Waltrip before Jeff Gordon took the lead. So we'll go back to it now. Now, how about Bobby Hamilton, who is running right there with Michael H Waltrip and them? He is, uh, has moved. He's running right behind Michael Waltrip, as a matter of fact. And he started, what, back in 39th place. Yep. So he has made a tremendous move up through the pack. One of the provisional starters, Bobby Hamilton. John Kernan has more on Bobby Hamilton. Bob, I was talking to his crew chief, Robbie Loomis, this morning, and I asked Robbie, how's the car running? It's the same car that they had at Daytona where they finished 20th with it. He said, well, the car's running okay. It doesn't run well by itself, but in the draft, it feels really comfortable. Their goal today, really, not to win the race, although that would be nice, but Robbie says, hey, a top 10 finish would send us all home with a smile on our faces. Doing a great job so far in the STP Pontiac, closing right up on Michael Waltrip, and now Ricky Rudd is to your left, or right, rather. R Ricky is really on the move down on the inside. He's got Chuck Bowne right behind him. And we said a moment ago that six cars had pulled away. No more. <laughs> They've all caught up. Everybody is nose to tail. Second line here with Mike Skinner leading that group, along with Ricky Rudd and Chuck Bowne. There you can see how wide the racetrack is here. Much wider than Daytona. Banking a little bit steeper. That's why they can run two abreast very comfortably and even sometimes three abreast not very comfortably. John Andretti there on your left has moved into the top ten already. 
The 43 car, we understand, may be smoking a little bit out there. We'll keep an eye on Bobby Hamilton. It could have been maybe some speedy drive that he ran through here on the tri-oval that they put down after Jimmy Spencer's incident. We'll keep an eye on it for you. Meanwhile, it's Gordon Labonte. Ken Schrader now third. And Ernie Irvin. Ernie Irvin caught down on the inside with no drafting help there at all. He needs one of his Ford buddies to come along. There's nobody behind him. Way back there is Michael Walker, but he's not any help to him right now. Ken Schrader won a race here at Talladega in July of 1988. He and Ernie Irvin come through the trial side by side. And from Schrader's car, we see Robert Presley drafting. Well, here comes Earnhardt, but he's not going to help Ernie Irvin. He's going to try to pass him. And it's three wide again in the corner. Now Ernie maybe can hang on to Earnhardt. Outside line's best or the inside. I think it depends a great deal on how your race car is working. They've uh, got plenty of room down there on the inside, so we can see that Ernie Irvin has picked Earnhardt up and going to try to draft him. There's Michael Walker right behind both of them. Now we'll see if this second line can come up and challenge the leaders. Well, Michael Walker, he decided to go up there and make it three abreast in the middle. That's a good thing. Also three abreast behind him, Jared on the inside of Chuck Bound, up high Jeff Burton. And the four car of Sterling Marlin continues to move up. He's up to 23rd right now. And he's taken those guys behind him with him. Yeah, he brought the whole field up there with him. So the whole field is just running together, except for a couple of cars that have uh, lost the draft. Darrell Walton is one of those. And Jeff Bodine and Darrell Walton are drafting together about uh, over a half a lap behind the leaders. Now it's four wide into one. been a good move for Steve Grissom who has been brought to the front. Now uh, Marlin goes to the high side. He's been running on the low side. Let's see Mark Martin's going to follow right along. He says I like that man. He's pulling me right on up through there. So they're going by Dale Jarrett up on the outside. Well you can find different cars during a race that you draft better with. Yeah. Apparently Mark thinks that uh, that Marlin is somebody that he wants to draft with today. Yeah, Earnhardt seems to be having, I don't know if he's got a problem or what the situation is, but Dale Earnhardt is definitely not running as good as he was, and he's held up that low groove there a little bit. Dale Earnhardt drops back to 14th position, so something may be wrong with his car, but it's Jeff Gordon up front at Talladega. Dale, Jared, very loose, uh, run as faster times than the leaders, what they're telling me down here. There's also some speculation at this end that the uh, wind is a factor that it hadn't been the last two days. That oh, might okay. be causing uh, the handle to go away on some of these guys. Okay. And uh, the four punch, very pleased after they took off that tape, as you might as well imagine. <laughs>
2.6 mile track featuring speeds near 200 miles an hour and Jeff Gordon on the left has the lead of this event right now. Terry Lamonti is running in second position then Ken Schrader and Robert Presley. Pretty calm up front, Bob. Single file racing, but look at Sterling Marlin as he continues to come up through the pack all the way from the back after making a pit stop during that caution. And Mark Martin has hung right onto him, right on his back bumper, and is coming to the front with him. Every place that Marlin goes, Martin goes. Now we have Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt both dropping back. Let's check for Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, from the front to back in 14th spot, there's the Texas Go Havilland Four and Bernie Irvin. He's reporting that the race car has gotten very, very loose. Larry McGriddle said, hey, we've got about 20 laps until our scheduled pit stop. We'll come in and we'll add a pound and a half of air pressure in the right front and bump the rear spoiler. Just hang on, Ernie. Hang on, man. Meanwhile, back in Dale Earnhardt's situation, he has languished back to 25th spot and he has an identical problem. He has told his crew, hey, I'm very loose. The problem's the same, so is the solution. Air pressure in the right front and bump the spoiler. Let's check in on Dale Jarrett's problem with Bill Webb. Well, I can just say, you know, the 88 car, Dale Jarrett is running fast laps, but is very, very loose. They're going to bump up the spoiler, make an air pressure adjustment. There's also some speculation down here that it's very breezy out here today, and that could be affecting the handle of the race car. John Kernan has more on Labonte. Well, Bill, that wind doesn't seem to be affecting Terry Labonte at all. Just talked to his crew chief, Gary Dehart, and Gary smiled as Terry says the car is perfect as far as handling wise. It's running just a little bit warm, but Gary said that's nothing to worry about. First pit stop, they'll take a little bit of tape off to get a little more air into the radiator to cool it down. Should have scheduled pit stop somewhere between laps 45 and 55. And Sterling Marlin has moved to fifth position. We timed the interval between Jeff Gordon, the leader, and Sterling Marlin and dropped the interval 2.8 to one second, and he was faster than Jeff Gordon except one lap. And remember that he and Mark Martin and a number of others made pit stops. They're going to have about six or seven or eight more laps that they can run out here before they have to make pit stops if everybody has to stop under green. And as you can see, Mark Martin, who joined West Sterling Marlin at the back of the pack, is now running six. Both of them go to the bottom side of the racetrack. All the way from 37 starting position for Mark Martin up to sixth. Well, the Hendrick cars have been running first, second, and third, but right now that's about to change as Sterling Marlin continues that move on the inside right to the front. Man, a very impressive performance by Sterling Marlin. Well, so much for the for the old saying, well, with those restricted plate engines, you can't pass. Huh? <laughs> That's for sure. Looking back on Presley and Martin. How about the compression ratio, Ned? We've had a change since last year's race here at Talladega. Well, certainly that reduced the horsepower a little bit on these restricted plate engines, but it, it makes the drafting that much more effective. And that's what we're seeing here today. That's the, the draft is playing such an important role. You get the car in the right position. You can just motor. Here's Marlin now from the outside. He's lost his buddy, yep. Mark Martin, back there. But Marlin is now challenging for second position. I think he's going to take second. He does. Marlin now to second. Terry Labonte back to third. He sets out after Jeff Gordon, who finished second in this race last year and eighth in the July race here at Talladega. <laughs> Here's John with more on the compression ratios. Well, Bob, Bill Weber and I were talking to Sterling this morning, and Sterling says with this lower compression engine that actually you can, as much Sterling Marlin is trying to get around for the lead, but he has no help to help him draft along. But Sterling, now he got him. He has him. Sterling Marlin pulls him to the lead after that pit stop and all the way from the back. But Gordon is trying to come back. And Gordon has his teammate behind him, Terry Labonte, to try and push him along. But Sterling says with these lower compression ratio engines, you can actually come up behind somebody, lift on the gas a little bit, and the five car, Terry Labonte, now dipping in with the four car, and there goes Gordon to the back. But Sterling says you can actually come up on somebody, lift on the gas just a little bit with these new lower compression ratio, ratio engines, mash the gas, and you'll get a little power to squirt around. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. However, John, I talked to Robert Gates this morning, said you think the 14-to-1 engine would get back? Better fuel mileage, guess again. The, the, 
The spark plug shows you might be able to lean the motor out, but if you do lean the engine out to get better fuel mileage at 14 to 1, you lose a tremendous amount of horsepower. So you've got to burn some gas, which means no better gas mileage than they got a year ago. Then I'm a little bit surprised that Terry Labonte formed this drafting line behind Sterling Marlin and put his teammate Jeff Gordon back to what, fifth or sixth? Well, he realized that, that Sterling Marlin was the faster car here right now and uh, that he needed to try to pull away from this crowd back behind him there, and that was his best opportunity to do it. I had a feeling that once Sterling Marlin got to the front of the pack that he would pull away, pull the field away more. Here's Dick Trickle in the pits, but uh, he would run faster laps than they were running, and sure enough, he is. Dick Trickle sitting on pit road, getting the tires changed on the car, doing a chassis adjustment there at the left rear. Trickle was very high on his chances coming here to Talladega. Mark Smith, who's in the health source Ford, had found a lot more horsepower than they had at Daytona, and uh, well, they were looking forward to getting him. He did have a good second round qualifying yesterday. He didn't qualify the Friday, but second round qualifying, he ran good yesterday. Five cars now in the lead draft, and the second pack lead being led by Michael Waltrip. And then a couple of cars side by side are Steve Grissom and Mark Martin. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. Yeah, Bob, that's very good. Uh, <laughs> up to first <Burzana. laughs> Pick it up out of break. <laughs> Dick Trickle has made a pit stop, tries to catch up with the rest of the field, and will tell you that you can see the same real-time electronic timing and scoring that Winston Cup officials use to monitor the races. If you dial up www.nascar.com, NASCAR Online. Catch the progress of any car on the track, even print out a scoreboard to follow along with each race. NASCAR Online, www.nascar.com. They're the first four. Sterling Marlin, Terry Labonte, Ken Schrader, Jeff Gordon. Three of the four are Hendrick cars, and running in fifth position is Robert Presley. Whoa, they're fanning out behind here and going five wide. Ernie Irvin got a move run coming up there. Now, that Darrell Walker just went a lap down here a moment ago to the leaders, so he's in that thick pack of cars. And Jeff Bodine up on the outside in the QVC number seven, he also went a lap down. There are 37 cars on the lead lap at the moment, with 44 laps completed. I think there are a good number of these cars that are anxious to get into the pits and get uh, a few adjustments made to their cars. Oh, we should start seeing pit stops before long, should we, Ned? Yeah, it shouldn't be too long, because we've run about 45 laps now. Oh, look at this. Jarrett beside Ricky Craven, and Jeff Bodine up on top. And Bodine stays very high. Several other cars go by, and that, that puts it down to just too wide now. That makes me feel better. <laughs> and there is Rusty Wallace, who has moved up to 24. Well, we should say move back. Yeah, really. Rusty, uh, Rusty actually started, what, in the 15th position. So Rusty's still running in that pack. But There's Brett Bodine running behind Rusty. Yeah, he was coming up through the pack with Sterling Marlin and 
Mark Mark, but when he got to the pack, apparently his car got a little bit loose in all the air that these cars were creating, so he had to drop off the pace a little bit, but he's still very much in there, but not, not up there with those that he was running with. This is what it looks like from Brett Bodine's perspective. Musgrave looking back on Brett. Rusty went by on the inside. Here's Brett going by. Here's Nemechek back there as well. I think these are some cars that would like maybe to, uh, to get in the pits and, and get some adjustments made. Let's show you how far that group of cars is from those running up front led by Sterling Marlin. When we went green on lap number 12 after the Jimmy Spencer Morgan Shepard mishap, Sterling Marlin was in 37th position. On lap number 40, he took the lead and has held it since. Where is Dale Earnhardt after running up front in the early stages of this event? The car lost its handling, and where is he? Way back to what, 33rd position? He is 33rd and out of the draft. Yeah, he's, he's riding this thing out right now, waiting for that first caution flag. You can see that his uh, his lap times are are slower than those of Sterling Martin. Not a whole lot, but, but enough to move him back to the back. So Dale Earnhardt is one of those that would like to get in for a pit stop here before too long and see if he can correct this problem that the car is experiencing. We're going to take a quick break in anticipation of the pit stops that are going to be coming up before too long. It's Sterling Marlin leading Terry Lavani in the Winston Select 500 at Talladega. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Bill Elliott becomes the first to make a pit stop here. Elliott gives up his 12th position to come in for new tires. A couple of other cars also win the 95 and the 8. Fred Strickland in the car number 8 and Chuck Bowne in the number 95. Others coming down pit road including Ernie Urban, Dale Jarrett, Jeremy Mayfield also in, as is Wally Dolan back, Brett Bodine. And let's go to Bill Weber in Mayfield's pit. Jeremy Mayfield is in to go to the right side first of Cape Turn off the front, and Dale Jarrett is also on pit road, fueling the 98 car, making a chassis adjustment. Now they come around to the left side. They're having trouble with the right rear. It's going to be a two-tire change for the 98 and a two-tire change for the 88. Down to the road goes Dale Jarrett, and he'll return to the race. And that's interesting. In the past, we've seen uh, four tire changes, but uh, not the case here at Talladega. Tire wear is not a big problem here on this racetrack. 
Dale Earnhardt burning him up as they come down, come uh, off pit road. Here are Marlon, Gordon, and Labonte. Here's Bill Weber once again. And Sterling Marlin coasts in. He's already stopped once today. They go around to the right side. This team is thrilled with how this car is running. Johnny Benson pits right in front of him. They clean the windshield. There's a right side tire change. It's going to be a fourth tire change for Sterling Marlin. Down pit road to Jerry Punch. Not so in the Jeff Gordon pit. Right side tire is only for the Bendix series yet. The DuPont Jeff is down and away. Right side tires, no chassis just put his back down pit road and being pursued. Being pursued by the car number five of Terry Labonte. A very, very busy pit road. Here comes Mark Martin, John Andretti, Derry Cope, Robert Presley, all coming out after pit stops. Well, Sterling Marlin's going to have to pass a lot of race cars again because as a result of taking on four tires, he's going to be back in the pack once they get their speed up. He's at the... There you saw Ernie Irvin going by. He's pitted the lap before, so he's uh, passing all of those cars as they try to get up their speed. Bobby Hamilton is in. Here's John. And it should likewise be only a right side tire change. And gasoline going in. A little bit of a problem with that. Yes, it's only going to be right sides. A little bit of a problem. It's getting it filled up. And finally, they get all the gas in. Bobby Hamilton's down and away. Let's go down to Bill Weber. Ricky Craven has come and gone. Fuel and right side tires for the guy that's fourth in points. Back to the race. And that should just about do it. I think everybody has been in now for a scheduled pit stop. And so we go back to the racetrack and see who is... Well, Dave front. Marcus might not have made a pit stop yet. He's the leader, isn't he? Yeah, Dave, and he's one of those, I'm sure, that made a pit stop a little bit earlier. Maybe when uh, they had that first caution flag. But Dave normally takes advantage of those. Of course, he had a good qualifying time here and started pretty hard in the field, so he might not have. But anyway, he's still out there, and he's in the lead. Kenny Wallace... Uh, has not made a pit stop as well. Dave Marcus, a former winner here. In the August race in 1976, Dave Marcus drove to victory lane. I think that means that Dale Earnhardt is almost a lap down. Dave Marcus right behind him. Of course, Dave has yet to make a pit stop. So... Still in the lead lap, but almost a lap down. So Nemechek leading this group of cars. And the 75 car of Morgan Shepard, although little, if any, aerodynamics of the front end of that car. The Remington Arms machine goes back into competition with Morgan Shepard aboard. He was involved in an early race incident with Jimmy Spencer. They're about 50 laps down, and now Jimmy Spencer is coming out of the pits also, Bob. So, at the moment, we have no cars out of the race. Both of those that were involved in the accident have returned to the racetrack. A little bit of tape on the front end of Jimmy's car, but uh, looks a little better aerodynamically than Morgan Shepard. Dave Marcus continues to lead here, still has, has not hit it. Jeff Purvis is running alongside him, and he is in 29th position. We'll take another break and be back with more from Talladega in just a moment. I don't think he came in. Well, I know Kenny keep... Wallace did. And he's, he's to the yeah, that's right. Marcus did not pit. He's yep. going to try to stretch it, and obviously it cost him. Yep. We're down here. Okay.
first pit stops and they're motoring on. Yeah, uh, 81 is a leader right now, but for all practical purposes, this is the... Yep, Ernest is about two and nine tenths seconds behind. So. Well, the 28 car is the next car. Well, he's about two and nine tenths seconds behind. We're going to check him to see if he's gaining any of He made a pit stop during the early caution and is staying out there. Kenny Wallace, in car number 81 on the left of your screen, is now the leader of the race. Dave Marcus was a few minutes ago. He ran out of gas but did make it to the pits. The final round of the Las Vegas Senior Classic continues at 5.30 today. Tommy Aaron, and Bob Charles share a one-shot lead with nine under par, one stroke ahead of Hale Irwin. Seniors burn up the desert today following Shop Talk at 5.30 Eastern Time here on ESPN. So Kenny Wallace is the leader of the race. Again, he was one of those who made an early stop. That's Mike Skinner uh, drafting him there. Mike is being shown in the 40th position, one lap down. He, has, of course, has made his pit stop. So he's hoping uh, that that 81 will pit before the caution comes out. This is the battle for second position now between Jeff Gordon and his teammate, Terry Labonte. Yeah, they really aren't battling, Bob. They're, they're hooked up in a draft. They're trying to pull away. Ernie Irving is the next car behind them. And just a moment ago, he was two and nine-tenths seconds behind them. And I've put my trusty stopwatch there. And he's now down to one and three-quarters of a second. So definitely Ernie Irving with three cars on his back bumper. They are gaining off those two cars that they're running by themselves. There is the third member of the Rick Hendricks table, the 25 car of Ken Schrader, also in this draft. We might uh, tell you Sterling Marlin fans after that awesome performance of moving up into the lead, but uh, taking on four tires and dropping back, he's in 13th position. It's going to be interesting to see if he can come back up. Yeah, he is coming back up, Bob. As a matter of fact, he was, he was down to about 20th position, but he's already picked off several cars. Looking back from Michael Waltrip's car, to Ken Schrader. And Sterling Marlin, well, he's in the third group of cars, but they're gaining on the second group, which is gaining on the first group. So we're going to have them all together here pretty quickly. You can see how quickly they're coming back up through there. And this time, Sterling is using Mark Martin. It's going to be the other way around. <laughs> yeah. So they, they found a combination. Those two cars just seem to work well together. And a car spinning, you can see from the in-car camera, back up on the banking, that is Jeremy Mayfield. And the caution is out. And Lake Speed is also involved with some left side damage on the spam, Melling Ford. That'll be a break for Kenny Wallace. Great break for Kenny Wallace. Let's go to pit for John Turner. Look, just getting, I'm just getting an update from the crew. Kenny was going to pit on the very next lap, so talk about luck being on your side. As soon as the caution came out, they all jumped up. But now the question is, does he have enough gas to go around the track until pit road is open so he can come on pit road? So they've got their fingers crossed hoping that he will not run out of gas because they were probably another lap green before they would have run out of gas or at least come close. So we'll see Kenny on pit road just as soon as pit road opens, but what a break for them. This is what they had hoped for. Well, it's closed right now because the pace car has not picked up the leader. Here's what happened to Jeremy Mayfield. Wally Donovan back and him running close. Yes, and they get together and around goes Mayfield. Let's see how Lake Speed gets involved in the deal. He comes, oh. Mayfield spins up the track right in the path of Lake Speed and Lake had nowhere to go. Nothing he could do, but he did. Boy, a tough break for Jeremy Mayfield, who has been so very good this year. And here's another perspective. There's the impact. Good move by Brent Bodine. Yeah. Boy, he was headed straight towards it, and he saw what was happening. Made a square left. And How and close touched. was it? Let's watch from the roof cam. Brent Bodine. That was closer than Brent wanted to be, I'll guarantee you. That car was just going around in circles, and somehow Brett missed it. Here's Bill Weber. 
Okay, well, they're going to change tires, and they put fuel in. Jeremy Mayfield's left rear quarter panel is flopping around. It's obviously been hit, so they're going to see if they can't find some way to secure that. They go under the car just to check it. They're pulling the sheet metal away from the left rear tire. Now they lower the car, and Jeremy Mayfield's going to roll away. And I'll uh, have an update from you. He's going to go behind the wall, in fact, so they obviously found something that... Uh, they didn't originally see, so Jeremy Mayfield behind the wall, and we'll walk down here real quick and see if we can't find out. Well, Bill, while you're doing that, now, we wonder if the front runners will come in now. Most of them only took on right side tires. Sterling Marlin took on four tires. He's already back up near the front. He's being shown in the 11th position right now, but will the others come in, top that fuel off, and get those left side tires? We know that Kenny Wallace will be making a pit stop. There he is on the right of your screen, and he's down off the banking onto the apron of the track. And yeah, Gordon yeah. and, and uh, Labonte and others follow him. Yeah, not a big surprise, really. Uh, they, they, one thing, they can't afford to give up those how many ever laps they've run since on fuel since they made those pit stops, but they also need those left side tires. Let's go to the pit. Leader is in. It'll be a four-tire change. We're talking about putting a rubber in the, le in the right rear. Terry Labonte took on only left side tires. He is headed down pit row. Let's go down to Bill Weber. And Dale Jarrett on pit road, changing right side tires. Sterling Marlin away. Rusty Wallace also on pit road. Kenny Wallace on pit road. Jeff Gordon also on pit road. This is Jewel. A lot of these guys just took torque tires last time. We're taking four now. Gordon away. Jarrett away. 30 away. The 41 sits in his pit. Lots of traffic down here. And again, the 98 still sits behind the wall. variety of strategy there as Kenny Wallace continues to get that service. Some taking on just left side tires, while some often would take on four, and it has not been long since they took on right side tires. Long pit stop, though, for Kenny Wallace. Everybody coming out and getting relined for a restart of this Winston Select 500. Mark Martin, huh? Is that right? Yep. He got out of the pits awfully quick, yes. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Talladega. We're under caution once again, looking back on the leader of the race now, Mark Martin. Before the caution, Kenny Wallace was the leader. He had enough fuel to make it into the pits, but it was a very slow pit stop. You see that there's a problem with the air gun. He's banging it on the pavement. Let's go down to John Kernan. Bob, this is the air wrench that they were using on the front tires, and we talk about a lug nut getting jammed. Look at that. That's what it looks like. That's what happened to Kenny Wallace. They can't take another one over the wall, so he had to wait until the work was done on the left rear, and they had to use that lug, wrench, lug, lug wrench gun. Now let's go down to Bill Weber, who's with Jeremy Mayfield. Well, they're working on the RCA Ford. They're going to change the trailing arms. Jeremy Mayfield still sits in the car. Window net's still up. He raises the visor. Jeremy, they're going to work on your car. What happened out there? It's just, uh, just a bad situation. We were just trying to hold our own and uh, come out to a good finish today, and we just lost it. I don't know what happened. They had a great car here, tested well, but behind the wall now. Jerry Punch on Dale Earnhardt's situation. Well, a lengthy pit stop here in the Good Race Pits. Let me ask David Smith. David, you guys were under the back of the car. What were you trying to do? Well, we just unhooked our rear sway bar, Jerry. Um, 
that just helped free the car up. You know, we worked for us at Daytona pretty good, but it doesn't like it here. So we just unhooked it, and we're going. That should make the car a little better for Dale out there now. They use the rear sway bar to help the car turn in the corners, but the downside, as you heard him say, it makes the car very, very loose. They unhooked it. Maybe it'll improve the Intimidator here at Talladega. There's team owner Richard Childress as he looks on to this massive facility here in Alabama. We're live for the Winston Select 500, and we'll be right back. We're almost, we're a third through with this thing already. This is going to end all too quick. <laughs> it is. I can, I can watch this all afternoon. It's great racing. One to go. Who, uh, who's in Sports Center that's throwing it to me? Thank you. Thank you, Brett, for the update on what's going on in Nazareth. We're here at the Winston Select 500 in Talladega, Alabama, and getting set for a restart. Mark Martin is the leader of the race. He made uh, a pit stop, but a very quick one. Let's put him up front. Currently the only federal left side tires on the Valley Ford and uh, got back out very quick. So he is the leader. Coming all the way back to 37th position now and leading the race. Okay, one just make his only guess. Yeah. Okay. In any case, Mark Martin, who was in ninth position before the caution flag, is now in first as we resume the competition. Michael Waltrip is in second spot, followed by Terry Labonte, Sterling Marlin, and Robert Presley, the top five, and they're at the top of the racetrack. And you can see some of those cars down on the inside are left down. Dick Prickle, Dave Marcus, and the car number 31, uh, Mike Skinner, were all a lap down, and so is Mike Wallace. A lap down. He had made a, a green flag pit stop. Uh, got him out of sync. Here's Waltrip going for the lead up on the high side. Mike Waltrip going for the top spot, and he gets it. Fifth place. 
Bobby Labonte was. He's lost a couple of starts. And now three wide once again as Mark Martin gets in the middle momentarily. And Sterling Marlin does make it three wide into the corner. Yeah, Mark's not in the position he wants to be in there right now, but he can't do anything about it until they do that car to get by. Then he can fall in behind them. So the, the cars are in the lead lap. They're going by him on the outside. Here are some cars making some moves down on the inside. Going to make a three breath. Back in the pack. Terry Labonte goes for the lead on the bottom of the racetrack, and Sterling Marlin will join in behind him to go to second, putting Mike Waldrop back to third. Robert Presley in an impressive performance is fourth. Mark Martin's going to drop all the way back to about 10 to 12 place. Oh. Rusty Wallace has moved up to eighth position. And down on the inside, passing the left car of Mike Skinner, puts him in the middle. Mark Martin going with him. See how close? Ooh. Mark tried to stay there, but once he got up there and uh, got some air, there's Ernie Urban making a big move down on the inside. He feels some momentum and thinks he can pass some cars. And he's not going to be able to do it. Left side of the tires almost in the hey, grass. You've got to get them to pavement. You've got to get on the... He had to back off. He, just, he knew that that banking was coming up, and he had to get there before he started making a turn. Dave Marcus just wouldn't give an inch. She was fighting him to the very end. Now Johnny Vincent joins Ernie Irvin down low. Sterling Marlin back out front again. Five cars breaking away here just a little bit from sixth place Rusty Wallace. There's the interval. Wallace and John Andretti with Mike, uh, Mark Martin side by side. John Andretti has had a good run despite the fact that he's qualified poorly. Yes, he's had an excellent run. You know, he ran off the strong in the Daytona 500. Yep, sure did. And they had a miscue in the pits. And then he got back out, and he was a lap down, and perhaps got a little over-anxious. But anyway, he, he got caught up in a wreck and, and uh, ended his day. Whoops. A little close, a little contact, as a matter of fact, between Dave Marcus and John Andretti. Now, Marcus is a lap down. Still there, Dave. Hang with him, buddy. John Kernan with more on John Andretti. Bob, John Andretti was on RPM tonight, last Wednesday, and he told me we're going to run really well. The car may not qualify well, but I tested it earlier this year, and it's not the same car they used at, Tal or at Daytona. They crashed that car, and it was pretty well used up. But he said this car was actually better, felt more comfortable in the draft. And this morning, Tim Brewer, who, you know, he never hedges on anything or might not tell you a story, but he told me, eh, we're just an average car, but John says it feels good. Well, obviously, it feels really good right now because they're running really well. Rusty Wallace making a move on the bottom. He comes up to third now behind Labonte and Marlin. This is the best we've seen Rusty Wallace run on a restrictor, restrictor plate track in quite a while. I had a feeling he was going to ride there today. Rusty just put on two tires during his most recent pit stop. And now with Mark Martin and others help at the bottom, they could move, uh, move up to challenge uh, Sterling Marlin, they certainly have done away with Terry Labonte. Yes, they have. Moved right around Terry, got him up on the high groove, out of the draft, so to speak, and now they move into second and third, he and Mark Martin, and they'll size Sterling Marlin up, see what they can do about putting those fours back up in front of the plays as those two, 24 and 25, of Rick Hendrick get together. If more, Jeff Gordon and Kenny Schrader, they want to team up together and try to go to the front. Watching from Michael Waltrip's car, who was the leader, but he's now back in seventh spot. Caught a glimpse of Ernie Irvin back there, also Ricky Rudd. Rudd's having a good run here today. Now Dale Jarrett and Ernie Irvin have hooked up together. Let's see what, the, what that might mean as Rusty goes for the lead. How about that? Well, Rusty expressed to Dave Despain during our NASCAR Today program that he felt as good as he has ever felt about a race car at a super speedway with this one. And look at the positions being changed on the backstretch. And again, four of rest racing into the corner. Oh, be careful, that does. Boy, there's a lot of give and take out there. Thank goodness there is. As Dale Jarrett did, he said they were him and Ernie Irvin were teaming up together, but he blew right on by Ernie down on the inside. 
There's Dick Crystal caught in the middle in the car number 19. Rusty Wallace becomes the 12th leader today. The record is 13, and we're not even close to the halfway point. And once again, the Henry cars are second, third, and fourth. Here's Earnhardt. He is coming from way back in the pack, too. He's coming up through there. He tags home to Dale Jarrett. And Bill Weber has a report on Rusty Wallace. Well, uh, just an average day at uh, Super Speedway for the two bunch. Gathered around a monitor, watching their car lead. As they're talking about the they did anything to the car. Now, nah, a little bit of air pressure. Took a little bit of wedge out. But they're really thrilled down here. They all got up on the wall and cheered Rusty as we went by last time. Talked to him Friday morning, and as we've all alluded to, he was extremely optimistic about how they would run here. It's not over yet, but he's leading now. There are 113 laps to go, as a matter of fact. But yes, Rusty Wallace is in the lead with Jeff Gordon running second in the 75 car. As you can see, is once again back in the garage area. That's Morgan Shepard, who was involved with an early race accident with Jimmy Spencer. We'll take another break and be right back to Talladega. See, the halfway point is what, 94? Okay. There, there's me. it on the ground keep going keep going keep going you doing billboards okay. a very scary moment for Bill Elliott the car got way off of the ground got airborne it came down on all fours and Elliott has stopped the car off of corner number two in the back stretch on the inside of the racetrack and he is waving to everybody the safety crew has arrived but look at what happened to bill elliott well you can see he's already off on the grass bob the car gets up in the air comes down bounces around the deck lid flies off of it there finally the roof flap comes up as he turns backwards good bit of damage done to the mcdonald's forward but he perhaps will be able to get it back out there but that was, you're right, that was a scary moment. Third caution of the day coming out on lap number 79. Bill Elliott, you'll remember, made up two laps under green in 1985 to take the win here. He also won the July race in 1987. Boy, that uh, could have been much more serious than it turned out to be. Yeah, if the car had started barrel rolling, it, it really could have been a lot more serious, but fortunately, it, just sort of bucked around out there a little bit like a bucking horse. Scary ride, though, for Bill Elliott, I'm sure. Oh, Jarred yeah. his teeth, I'm sure. Well, the uh, wrecker has arrived at the scene along with the safety crew, and now the pace car, which is out on the track, has the field in tow, and it looks like just about everybody's going to come in. Yep, hit down pit road. Rusty Wallace leads. 
leads them down. Let's go down to John Kernan in Labonte's pit. Terry Labonte pulls in. They change left side tires. Last pit stop. They go around and work on the right side tires. Last pit stop also a slight chance to adjust the car just a little bit tight to what Gary Gehart told me. They're already waiting. Now they're coming around. In. Let's go to Bill Weber. Gas and go for Rusty Wallace. So he's already returned. In front of him is the 18. In front of him, the 12. Down to Jerry Punch. Last time it was a gas and go for Mark Martin. This time they will change right side powers and gas it off as he is down pit road. Right side's only for Mark Martin. Big movement out of the pits. Kearney Irvin comes out. Close call there between Derry Cope and I believe Hutt Strickland as Derrick was trying to get in the exit lane. John Andretti, one of the last to come out along with Jeff Purvis. That's Bill Elliott's arm there out of the car. It, yeah, he had taken his helmet off a little bit earlier. I believe he's trying to come out. Yeah. Or maybe maybe it's maybe just, just waiting, but, but at least his, his arm is moving around. And Here it is once again. Watch the right side here. We pan back and catch Elliott's car way up in the air. It gets over on the right corner and amazingly doesn't come over. Yeah, that is amazing, Bob. And it fortunately lands back on its four wheels. Don't know what happened that started that accident that got him hit it out into the grass. Well, in any case, we will check on the uh, condition of Bill Elliott. He appears to be not seriously injured. And we'll be back with more of our racing in just a moment. Stay with us. Can they not get him out or what? what what's the deal here? Well, I can't understand. I thought he could right. be. Uh, I was just asking, is he unable to get out or does he not want to or? Okay, all right, good. I see, okay. Probably concerned about a back injury yeah. or neck injury yeah. or something. Somebody may have gotten into him, huh? They yeah, probably did. Okay. We doing billboards? Okay. We're back at Talladega. Our concern is for Bill Elliott. Boy, the most popular driver in NASCAR Winston Cup competition has thousands and thousands of fans. Now here is the uh, shot from the grandstand here on the main straightaway toward the back straight. You can see the car lift off the ground and how high it gets airborne and then slams down on all fours. Yeah, but, uh, Bob, he came out of a pack of cars there coming off of turn two. so. It's you can pretty well rest assured that he probably got tapped as it came off of that turn. And as we pointed out before, the car really gets airborne, but it does come back down on all four. That's got to be hard on Bill's uh, back and neck there a little bit, though, making a, a hard landing like that. And that might be, you know, that's just pure speculation on my part, that maybe it's a little sore. Or Looks like they're going to take the windshield off of the car. And uh, I thought I saw the jaws of life there that they may cut the top off the car. I don't know that for sure. But anyway, they are working very hard to get him out of the car. We did see his hand and arm come out of the car. 
and we saw his head moving around. So let's hope that it is not a real serious injury to Bill Elliott, who has crashed here on the backstretch during the Winston Select 500. We'll take another break and be back in just a moment. Well, that's a good sign. He's okay then. Yeah. Good. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston Select 500 is being brought to you by Western Auto. Western Auto and Western Auto's Parts America are the official auto parts store of NASCAR. By McDonald's, on the track and in our restaurants, just watch us cook. And by the NASCAR Story. To order, call 871-NASCAR. The driver of the McDonald's Ford, Bill Elliott, has had a crash here. They have got the windshield out of the car. He is still in the machine, however, but we do not believe he's seriously injured. Jerry, do you have an update? Well, Bob, we're setting down in the McDonald's pit. Much of the McDonald's crew now is headed back to the garage area or even to the hospital to try to check on Bill Elliott. But before they left a moment ago, a couple of crew members told me that apparently Bill Elliott said that uh, when the car came to rest, he did pull his own helmet off. And the rescue workers wanted to take the roof of the car off, and Bill said, no, I don't think we need to take the roof of the car off. Just take the windshield out. Apparently, Bill was complaining of some pain in the low back and his left hip area. And the way the car came down so drastically from in the air, you got to believe that's a pretty solid lick because those seats don't have much cushion at all. Yeah, that's uh, the way that it looked from our perspective. Ah, uh, uh, here he comes. That's his race car. He didn't want to cut the top off that thing. Absolutely. They didn't have to, and I don't blame him because that ruined the race car. He is in obvious pain as uh, they started to lift him out, but they did not get him all the way out of the car. Well, we're going to continue to monitor the situation and give you the latest information as it becomes available to us from here at Talladega. Be right back. Okay. Brett. We don't have Brett. Uh-uh. Nope. 6, 9, 16, 19, 42, 75, 88, 98. 88. Ned will talk to his son. Can I try him now? Dale Jarrett, this is your dad in the ESPN booth. You read me? Can you imagine him not acknowledging his father? <laughs> Dale, this is ESPN. Do you read me? <laughs> Wonder if he'll answer me. <laughs> right, Bob. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
How rude. Dale, you know better than that. <laughs> Okay. I guess we're. I guess we won't, since he can't hear us talk. He might have been talking, and we couldn't hear him. I don't know. Yeah. And at Talladega, we are still under caution. Bill Elliott is out of the car. He's being loaded into the ambulance and will, of course, go first to the local facility. And then, if need be, they will take him on to a more permanent facility. And we will get an update on Bill Elliott's condition as it becomes available to us. But in the mirror at Talladega because of a crash involving Bill Elliott. We will be going green before too long. Come back with us. <clears throat> Who did? Who? Hmm. Oh. It uh, was, yeah, but it, sure it, was. it was probably during that green flag pit stop situation that he got back on the lead lap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. damage and I thought on that 94. Oh, yeah, it's tore pretty bad. Almost looked like he flipped, didn't it? Yeah. Are we eight laps from the halfway point? 86. Welcome back to Talladega, 85 laps on the board. Rusty Wallace is the race leader waiting for the green flag to come back out and we'll go back to racing. And when we do, look for the possibility of the two and the six hooking up. In fact, Rusty Wallace just thanked Mark Martin for helping him get back to the front of the field. When they're together, they might be the fastest two on the track. They're not teammates, but they're working together. Green flag out, racing back at Talladega. They are first and fifth as the green flag comes out. Rusty Wallace is the leader. In second position is Ward Burton third, Ricky Rudd, fourth, Jeff Gordon, 
And in fifth position is Mark Martin. Rusty has now led six of the last seven races. He is second in laps led this year next to Jeff Gordon. And not up there among the front runners is Sterling Marlin, who was, but he came into the pits as they were coming around to get the one to go signal. Topped off with fuel. Boy, that is showing a tremendous amount of confidence, he and the crew, that they don't mind going to the back one more time. They come from back to the front already, so they feel they can do it again. Now we'll see how far back he is after making that pit stop. Looking on back. That was Johnny Benson in the yellow car. Let's look for the next yellow car. There he is. There he is. Right behind Robert Christman. He's a long way back, but he's got a fast race car. He's back in 28th position at the moment. 28th for Sterling Marlin. Drafting partner right now is Robert Presley. John Kernan has a preliminary report on the condition of Bill Elliott. Well, I just talked to his crew chief, Mike Bean, who was here at the Infield Care Center when they brought Bill in, and Mike uh, walked by and said injured hip, possibly a broken hip. So Bill Elliott is undergoing examination right now in the Care Center, and we'll update you further as soon as we find out the preliminary indications of possible broken hip. All right, we will stay with that story throughout the afternoon and give you any information that becomes available to us. Meanwhile, on the racetrack, Jeff Gordon coming three wide at the start-finish line below the 71 car of Dave Marcus. Remember, Dave is a lap down. He did not make a pit stop during this last caution. Martin leads the second line down low with Michael Waltrip and Steve Brisson behind him. And from his perspective, he goes under Terry Labonte. And here's a Fram field summary. Rusty Wallace, the leader, started 15th. And the 98 car of Jeremy Mayfield, which crashed uh, several laps ago, is 27 laps down. But he is back in competition, or at least is back out on pit road. And here's another three wide Going into turn one, Michael Waltrip leading Steve Grissom and Dale Jarrett through there. Dave Marcus there, able to hang right with them as. So Ward Burton has taken over the advantage now, leading the others down the backstretch. Jeff Gordon tucked in behind him. Mark Martin slingshotting to the inside there. Ward Burton was very concerned when he came here Friday that his car, did, he, in the first practice session, it didn't get the speed out of it that he wanted, and then went out and qualified in the 19th position, and here he is leading the race. And Bill Weber has more. Well, two Sundays ago, Ward Burton missed the race at North Wilkesboro, so he went home to Virginia and spent his to Sunday plowing his field. Last week, he missed Martinsville and spent all day with a chainsaw. Now, this Sunday, he's leading the Winston Select 500. But after he missed both those races, now Jeff Gordon works back in front. When Ward missed both those races, he spent two hours outside the track signing autographs at his souvenir rig, then went home and did fan club work Saturday night to keep his fans happy. Now he's trying to keep his sponsor happy for the six and the five. I might have something to say about that. And yep. that's how quickly you can lose the lead. Ward is already back to fourth position as a battle for fifth behind him is between Schrader and Mark Martin. Well, Jeff Gordon back out front once again and has the lap car of Dave Marcus who is hanging right in there with those guys. And Rusty Wallace is on the low side once again. Rusty probably looking for Mark and maybe vice versa. Yeah, look at this. Mark yeah. moves down right in front of Rusty and they draft together they had a good combination earlier in the race Earnhardt up on the outside of Rusty Wallace there but is, is Rusty close enough to now Earnhardt gets in there he wants to behind no he don't want behind Mark Martin he wants to go by he has the momentum and look at it just motor by down on the inside and Michael Waltrip tries to gain the position also but cannot do it Dale Earnhardt has however moved to fourth spot Mike Skinner is a lap down in 36th posi uh, position, but this is his first time on Talladega Super Speedway. 
There are 34 cars being shown on the lead lap, and and a couple of those cars, Bob, we saw them get lapped on the racetrack. Darrell Waltrip and Jeff Bodine in the first long green flag run. Well, they had made pit stops on at about 10 laps, so they didn't have to stop when the others did. When the others did stop, they got back in the lead lap. Earnhardt took a look to the inside of Ward Burton, but decided to drop back behind him. And now it's a six car, make that seven car draft. But I think distance-wise, I think he has. He was pretty far back when we saw him there a moment ago. And boy, he has, has drafted up there pretty quickly on these guys. The next time they come by, they'll receive the cross-flag signal from Doyle Ford indicating the halfway mark. $10,000 Gatorade money. That's right. And Jeff Gordon is among those eligible for the money. Look at Marlin's lap times compared to Jeff Gordon's. They're consistently faster. Yeah, at, at least a half a second a lap, wow. sometimes more than that. But can, and here comes Terry Labonte. He oh. wants that $10,000. Earnhardt wants it, too. He's got to get it. Nope, Labonte got it. Terry Labonte, three feet <laughs> for the lead going into turn one. The battle for $10,000 and the halfway mark goes to Terry Labonte, but now Dale Earnhardt puts himself ahead of the field. And once again, Dale Terry back off. And uh oh, empty Mike Skinner for backing off. Whoa, about to cause a big wreck. That was as close as you can come at more than 190 miles an hour. <laughs> They are getting on with it here at Talladega. Halfway, 93 more laps to go. It's Dale Earnhardt now in front of the Winston Select 500 at Talladega with Labonte second. Well, it seems like Mike Skinner has been the middle man a lot this <laughs> afternoon, isn't it? Every yeah. time you look at a group, he's yeah. in the middle. Yep. Yeah. That's not a good place to be. Uh, no, we did not. Uh -uh. I don't have a card, but I will certainly do it for you. Yeah. Okay. Kenny Main tonight and John tomorrow night. And everybody's happy. Indy cars, 401. the record, huh? That is the record. Huh? You said earlier the record is 13. Okay. Okay, I got you. And we've tied the record for number of leaders. I got you. Okay. And what's the record for lead changes? Oh, well, we're not quite close to that, are <laughs> Back at Talladega, Alabama, it's Dale Earnhardt, followed by Mark Martin and Indy Cars, Formula One, of course, NASCAR Winston Cup, all in action today. And Kenny Main will have the rundown for you at 7 o'clock tonight on RPM tonight over on ESPN2. And then, of course, don't forget the Monday through Friday edition with John Kernan. That's also at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. RPM tonight. They're still racing out there, Ned. Yes, three of rest again. Rusty Wallace leading a charge back there. Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace, Ted Musgrave. All involved in this battle here that we're watching. John Andretti is in there, so is Brett Bodine. Rick Raven. Raven. About 14th back to 21st and along in that area. 
and an update on the condition of Bill Elliott from John Kernan. Well, Bob, Bill Elliott has now left the infield care center. They're taking him by ambulance to a helicopter. They will transport him to Careway Hospital in Birmingham. His left hip apparently dislocated, and they would hope to put it back in joint. Uh, or maybe Dr. Jerry Punch could explain a little bit better than I could, but they hope to do it this afternoon at the Careway Hospital. Once again, the hip not broken, dislocated the left hip for Bill Elliott. Other than that, he's perfectly conscious, and he's fine. Jerry? Well, you hope the dislocation is simply a traumatic twisting of the hip, hope, but unfortunately dislocations can also mean fractures. They don't have x-ray available to them here in the infield care center because it takes too long to get an x-ray, and they're primarily here to stabilize. So if the hip is dislocated, you've got to hope it is a pure dislocation and not a fracture, but they'll find out when he lands at Caraway Medical Center there in Birmingham. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed that it's a only a dislocation for Bill Elliott, who is one of the great competitors in this series. Well, Jeff Gordon is being shuffled to the back, isn't he? Yes, and Dale Garrett got on the inside of him going into turn one, and some others uh, followed through. Bobby Labonte went on the outside. Johnny Benson followed Garrett through, but now Ernie Urban making a big move there, passing a couple of cars. Well, let's give a call to Johnny Benson, the 30 car with a great run, his first in a Winston Cup car here at Talladega. He has been in two Bush Grand National races on this racetrack. And the Kodak car of Sterling Marlin has caught this group, and he's now up to 15th. Yeah, by the time we, almost by the time that we get that graphic up there, or do we see the scoreboard? Well, he's uh, even moving up more. He is coming to the front again. He has a tremendously strong race car here today. Looking back from Ken Schrader's car onto Mike Skinner on the right, and that's Steve Grissom in the wacky racing Cartoon Network car. And there's Johnny Benson. Now, Benson's finishes in Bush Grand National competition here at Talladega were 38th and 5th. And now let's take a look at our Bush race recap since we have gone past the halfway mark. The leader, Dale Earnhardt, 11 of 99 laps led, 18 lead changes. The record is 75. We're not close to the record there. We've had three cautions for a total of 19 laps. The average speed, 146.580. Taking a look now at the 13 drivers who have led a lap and picked up five bonus points. Sterling Marlin and Jeff Gordon have both led 18. And the 13 different leaders that we have had tie a record here at Talladega. So we're not close to the record as far as lead changes are concerned, but we could very well break the record for different leaders. There you see Labonte Hamilton and Ward Burton have also been given credit for leaving, leading a lap. And two cars out of the race, Morgan Shepard because of the crash early on, and Bill Elliott's most recent accident over on the backstretch. The birthday boy is leading this Winston Select 500. Dale Earnhardt will be 45 tomorrow. Here at Talladega, seven wins, 17 top fives, 21 top tens, and a total of 1,061 laps led. And if he leads a total of 36 laps today, Dale Earnhardt will break the record that is currently hold, held by Buddy Baker of number of laps led at this facility. Boy, Dale Jarrett got a run off of turn two, went from fifth up to second. Right up on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt, Ward Burton was helping him come through there, so that might be a drafting combination, that Pontiac of Ward Burton and the Ford of Dale Jarrett. Well, we haven't seen much from Dale Jarrett here in a recent uh, time, but now he is up there battling with the leaders once again. Bill Weber has a report. Well, Dale Jarrett's car still is not exactly where he wants it. It's better, but he's still having to let up when he goes through the turns. He's ha having a handling problem, cannot get it through the turns as well as he would like. His crew just told me if we can get that figured out, nobody's going to catch us. <laughs> well, the both Yates cars now back up to the front behind Dale Earnhardt. And the 12 car of Derek Cope will give a call to him as he has stayed right up there with the front runners. He's currently in 11th position up on top of the racetrack. Very high up there running behind Bobby Labonte. Bobby in the green car, the Joe Gibbs in the same battery. Now Earnhardt has.
has him lined up two by two behind him, and that's yeah. not good for uh, those running behind him. No, Earnhardt likes that for them to be running uh, two by two, but it looks like that outside lane might be about to come by. Yep. Being led by Mark Martin. Martin takes the lead off of corner number two. Derek decides he wants to go on that outside lane. Rusty Wallace is mired back in the traffic. Ernie Irvin caught in the middle there. Ricky right on the outside. Rusty Wallace coming down on the inside. And a side-by-side -side battle off of corner number four into the trioval. It's Dale Earnhardt leading the inside line and Mark Martin leading the outside line. Here they come down through the trial bay. Earnhardt will get credit for leading that lap, but it was a matter of inches. Well, Dale Jarrett decides he wants to go back to the low side. He can't make his mind up whether <laughs> he wants to run high or low. And look at Johnny Benson. Good run by Johnny and aside Terry Lamotti. And again, with the two by two, it gives Earnhardt an opportunity to pull away momentarily at least. Riding with Michael Waltrip in the set go forward. And there is the uh, helicopter that's taking Bill Elliott to the hospital in Birmingham to check for a, at least a dislocation, a possible fracture. Of the hip. Jarrett three wide again, down into one. This is a 31 car pack. 31 cars in this. And they're four wide in the middle of the corner. And Schrader wisely backed out a little. Yeah, that was smart. Look at this. 31 cars. Unbelievable. All of those that are on the main lane for all of the Daryl Walton. Here's Ernie going down, making it three wide. Down to the inside of Dick Trickle. And look at Derek Cope up on the high side of the racetrack. Going around Johnny Benson. So it's Earnhardt leading with Terry Labonte, and you call it from there on back as we are 106 laps into the Winston Select 500. runs well and we can mention how he will probably run very well next weekend mm -hmm. when we go to Sonoma There's Skinner once again, Ned. Yep, right in the middle. I saw he him does. drive up in there a while ago. Yeah, maybe I mean, he likes it up there. Yeah, he didn't. Because there were two cars at far apart, and he just ran up there between them. Oh, man, not that again. Look at Cope. <laughs> yeah, he, he just he yeah, likes it up, up there. His car is working good up there. Yep. Well, 
Welcome back to Talladega. I'm Bob Jenkins along with Ned Jarrett, Jerry Punch, Bill Weber, and John Kernan. Benny Parsons not with us today, a little bit under the weather. BP, we'll see you hopefully next weekend at Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California, when we're bringing you the first of two road races in the Winston Cup Series. Here we're coming up on Darrell Walker. As I mentioned a moment ago, that Darrell had gotten back on the lead lap, but now he's about to go a lap down. He's running in the 34th position. And the top four team were strung outside, but rather uh, nose to tail here, and they remain pretty much that way. It's Dale Earnhardt leading Terry Labonte, Michael Waltrip, Mark Martin, and Ward Burton. Our snapshot on Dale Earnhardt shows that he has led 21 laps. His low has been 34th, and that's as low as you can go, and his highest has been the lead where he currently runs. Started in 16th. Right at the back of this pack is Derek Coach. We saw him a moment ago back in the traffic spot, but he has come up through several cars. There he is on the outside. And Jeff Gordon makes a move down on the inside. It looks like Steve Griffin's going to try to go, but Cope is having a great run. His car apparently works good up on the high side. So he doesn't have anybody up there yeah. working with him, but he's just going right along. That's strong. Every time you look to corner four in this pack, you see that car way up high. He's been higher than that at some time, so yeah. apparently the uh, main and tail Ford is working for him up in that area. They're looking for some additional sponsorship on that car number 12, Bobby Allison Motorsports car. It'd be great to see them get it. In fact, the main and tail people, Straight Arrow Company, are trying to help find some, some more sponsorship for that car. 88 on his main and uh, 24 on his tail right now, but now he moves alongside the 88 coming out of the second corner. Dale Jarrett's going to be caught down on the inside with nobody. No, he's not going to be caught that long. He <laughs> jumped up in front of Sterling Marlin. Now Marlin's going to try to go by on the inside. But there's Jimmy Spencer in car number 23. And we understand the 30 car of Johnny Benson might be having a problem, Bill. Ned, they're on the wall down here. Johnny's radioed in. He might have a tire going down. He's got a vibration problem. Can't figure out which tire it is. They're standing on the wall, waiting to see if Benson goes by or if indeed he comes down pit road. He's going to come into the pit, so this will really hurt Johnny Benson making his rookie run. He coasts down pit road, heading for his stall about one-third of the way down. He brings the Pennzoil Pontiac into the pits. The crew off the wall. They swing around to the right side. They will... They were planning to change all four because Johnny couldn't tell him which one he thought was flat. So they'll fuel him up, change four tires, and send the Pennzoil back out. Pennzoil Pontiac will return to the track. And there's problems. Dave Marcus has spun and back into the inside retaining wall on the back stretch. And in just about the same location that Bill Elliott crashed in a few laps ago. And boy, this is going to be a tough break for Johnny Benson. He, he, he hurries down to run, but you can't hurry too much. If he can get to that line before the leaders do, he can stay at the lead left, but he isn't going to be able to do it. Tough break for Johnny Benson. Maybe he will. Yes, he yeah. will. He did. Wow. He got to job. that line first, so he'll stay at the lead left. So he'll not only stay in the lead lap, but he's completed the pit stop, and everybody yeah. else will have to come in now. He'll be in the in. lead. Yeah. Probably will be in the lead. Wow. What a so, uh, Unless he violated the speed limit on pit road, and we don't know that right now. We'll wait no. and see. There's the crash car of Dave Marcus. The window net is down. He apparently is okay. And here is the replay. Watch right. Well, he comes out of a pack of cars there. Apparently some contact. Down on the inside, you see one of the roof flaps. He's already up, and the car stays on the ground. And backs into the inside retaining wall. And the front end gets it when it slings it around. The front end gets a lick also. Those spotters down there, Ned, that we saw with There the are spotters. They, yeah. On this racetrack, they have more than one spotter because the guy who's up in the high position on, on the uh, main grandstand side of the racetrack, he simply can't see uh, as far away as it is to be able to make judgment calls on whether the car, whether your driver is cleared another car or something like that. Guess what, Ned? Benson violated the speed limit. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is too bad. Yeah, if they just bring him in and hold him 15 seconds or something like that, yep. be okay. It's better, better than better losing than a whole lap, that's yeah. for sure. Even if they put him at the rear of the field, yep. it'd be better than that. So he was really wise to do that. There it is. He's, he's out right now, crossing the line as the field comes down to get the caution flag. There, there it there's is. There's the field, and we understand that the penalty would be that he go to the rear of the longest line. So that's still better than going left. Here's John Kernan in Labonte's pit. 
Terry Labonte slows it down. He'll pull into pit road. The crew will go to service, hand him a nice big drink of water, clean the windshield, right side tires going. Uh, let's go to Bill Weber and Sterling Marlin's pit. Whip around to the right side of the Kodak Film Chevrolet. They'll change right side tires and gas up Sterling Marlin. What an excellent run he's had. It's got to be a two-tire change. They're waiting simply on fuel down to Jerry Punch. And they've already completed the right side tires on the Goodrich Chevrolet. Left side tires going on. Marlin is down and away as he exits pit road. 21 is down and away. Earnhardt is down and away. Here goes Presley. And Gordon is out. I think the car number 28 still working on the left side of Ernie Irvin's car. Probably the left front tire. They're holding the car on the jack. Now he's finally up the jack. And a problem with Ernie Irvin as Kyle Petty way out on the grass exiting pit road. Yeah, Kyle had to take evasive action and get way down there in the grass to uh, avoid hitting someone as they came out. Now only a couple of cars remain on pit road while Dave Marcus's car is on the back of a hook headed for the garage area. Dave, the victim of the most recent accident here at Talladega. Look like that the 99 car got into him a little. Couldn't tell. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Pretty evident. <laughs> Welcome back to Talladega and the Winston Select 500, which has now gone 116 laps under caution here because of an incident involving Dave Marcus. Let's try to find out what happened as they came off the second corner. Okay, he's in there. You see where the light spot is on your screen. That's the group that he's running with as he came off of turn two. And there he goes sideways, down, just shoots out of the pack, down onto the grass area. You see the roof flap come up. Spins around on the grass, and then hits the inside retain wall. Too bad for Dave. He's having a good run here today. Although he was a lap down, he, he ran out of gas early in the race after leading for a while, but uh, he was having one of his better runs. Brett Bodine was right behind him. Let's see how it looked from Brett's perspective. that uh, may have tapped him. They uh, are working on the front end of Jeff's car on the on pit road. It definitely was Jeff that uh, had contact with Dave. Yeah, you see, there is quite a bit of damage to the front end of Jeff's car. All right, still under caution here as they clean up the area in the back stretch. You're watching live coverage of the Winston Select 500. We'll be right back. Which one? Okay. I still think there was a red car between Jeff Burton and Dave Marcus. Oh, really? And I think Jeff Burton hit the red car after it hit Dave Marcus. Who is it? Do you know? Like, is that name a chick? Is it name a chick? It could be Rick Mass, couldn't it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
Getting set for a restart, Michael Waltrip is at the front of the field. Let's look more closely at this accident. Ned, good eyes here. Well, I saw a red car up in front of me. This is a, the blue car is Jeff Burton. And here comes Brett Bodine, and you see right there is the hit, and it's Rick Mast that is in front of Jeff Burton, and Burton hit Mast after Mast apparently made contact with Dave Martin. Yep. So it was not Jeff Burton that had the direct contact with Rick Mast. It was, or rather with uh, Dave Marcus, it was Rick Mast. Okay. All right. Now we get set for a restart here. The line is forming. Michael Waltrip is at the front. We uh, have an AutoZone on-track interval for you. Waltrip and Earnhardt. Look at the difference. 32.9 for Waltrip and 42.6 for Earnhardt. I'm going to speculate that there was a difference. In it. We saw Earnhardt change four tires and maybe Michael only took on two tires. Not, not belittling their pit stop at all. They made a great pit stop to, to get out in front of the pack. Ace car pulls off. See, there are only four cars that are that are laps down. In fact, there's just one one lap down. The 31, 19, 17, and 90 are one lap down. Green is waving. Back to racing. Michael Waldrop's best finish here at Talladega came in May of 1994. He was third and has the Wood Brothers single forward at the front of the field right now. And we look back on Terry Labonte from his perspective there are 70 laps to go in this one and a tightly bunched field of cars comes out of corner number two building up steam down the back stretch here comes sterling marlin to the inside with steve grissom right behind him steve grissom's had a good run here today in the car 29 he's hung right up in there in that top 15 or so show to ninth position now Skinner and Robert Presley are side by side. Skinner is not on the lead lap in the 31 car, but Robert Presley is on the lead lap. He is in fourth spot. There's still 31 cars on the lead lap. We might be in for a record here as far as the number of cars yep. on the lead lap. This is where it gets a little tense. We're past the halfway point. Drivers are ready to make their moves, but the racing is very tight. Dale Jarrett picks up a spot there. Although the draft is important, Ned, we've seen a lot of unassisted passing this afternoon. It seems like. Well, we have, but we have some as a result of the draft. Yeah. Uh, they pick up momentum behind a, a couple of other cars and, and just slingshot right past them is what happens. Look here, they're four wide. Sterling Marlin, he might have enough force power to not even have to need the slingshot. Dale Jarrett right behind him. That's helping him. Good job, buddy. Good job. Got Earnhardt in the middle there. Might we see a resurgence of the slingshot, Ned, with the lower compression engines? Well, yes, but it takes more, uh, more than one car to do it. Uh, it used to be that Cale Yarborough made it so famous winning Daytona 500 by running second, getting the white flag, and then slingshotting past on the last lap. But you can't do that now with, uh, with just two cars out there running by themselves. Sure as I say that, they'll do it at the end of the race. <laughs> but. Now Terry Labonte to the inside with Robert Presley, Dale Earnhardt, and others make the challenge and Terry Labonte in the inside line go to the front. Grand field summary for you. Where your driver was running last lap. Ernie Urban making a move. He's trying to slingshot past somebody. Got Rusty Wallace helping him back there to go past Jeff Bedine. Jeff Bedine in the middle there. And there is Wally Dahlenbach also in that group. Dahlenbach in the blue car on the low side. Wally with a good run after an excellent run at Daytona. And we'll see him, I'm sure, as one of the favorites next weekend when we go to the road course at, Ta at uh, Sears Point in Sonoma, California. Sick 
Kenny Wallace there near the end of this pack. He led the race for a while as a result of staying out longer than others and, and uh, had made an early pit stop, a fuel stop, and stayed out and led the race. They got a break with the caution, but he had a problem in the pits, and uh, they wound up at the rear of the field, and then he's still out there on the lead lap. Very early drive to make some more moves. There's Kenny Wallace in the 81 car, the square D Ford. Back up front, it's Terry Labonte, followed by Dale Earnhardt. Last year's pole winner here at Talladega, Terry Labonte, has led 28%, or had led 28% of the laps on super speedways going into this event. He is currently fifth in the point standings, Terry Labonte, the Iron Man of NASCAR Winston Cup competition. Sterling Marlin third, Dale Jarrett fourth, Robert Presley is fifth. Here's Ernie Urban again. Every time we see him on that backstretch, he's pulling out and passing some cars. Or trying to. He's behind Ward Burton, who is behind Steve Grissom, who's behind Bobby Hamilton. And Rudd got way up high there in the corner in the Tide Machine. Sterling Marlin look to the inside of Dale Earnhardt coming into the tri-oval and will make a bid for the lead. He's got Dale Jarrett behind him. Yep, he pulled down there hoping Jarrett would go with him. Sure enough, Jarrett did. Shuffles Earnhardt back. Now Jarrett going to try to go on the inside of Labonte as well. He has the momentum and takes the position. Dale Jarrett going for the Winston Million. If he wins here today, it's a check for $100,000, but he doesn't cash it yet. He waits until Charlotte and Darlington to see if he can win another one, in which case he would be paid a million dollars. Of course, it's only been done once by Bill Elliott in 1985. And Ken Schrader, we understand, has a problem. He yeah, was he just waving the cars by him. Sounds like the engine might have gone awry on the car. Well, he was running in 18th position, Ken Schrader was. He's down on the apron, now entering pit road in the button machine. Well, maybe he geared it down, so maybe it isn't the engine. Maybe he's had a flat or something. I don't know. He's coming into the pits. Here's Bill Weber. Schrader's here, reported a vibration to his crew. They swing around to the right side. They'll fuel the Budweiser Chevy. Ken Schrader got his first win here at Talladega. Was hoping to get another one today. They've changed the two right side tires. They're going to come around and make a four tire change to make sure that uh, now it's just a two tire change. Leaders on the go into the three. Knew the leaders were coming. Heads back out. I think they also took a look at the tires on the right side and said they're okay, Kenny. So we got the problem corrected. Here comes the pack off of the fourth corner. He's going to be able to stay on the lead lap, but these cars are at full speed, and yeah. Schrader has got a long way to go before yeah. he's at full speed. Yeah, it takes a long time to get that speed up, so I think Kenny, unfortunately, will go a lap down, because they'll catch him before he gets his speed up. Jeff Purvis, there in the 44 car on the left side of your screen. He has stayed in the lead lap all day and doing a great job. They're black flagging the 25 car. I wonder if he, wonder if he might have been exited his pit road a little bit too fast. I bet so. Well, he's going to lap down there right now. And he's yeah, set up on the track to allow the faster cars to go by him. And uh, this isn't a great opportunity for him to come into the pits and heed the black flag. So he'll go around at least one more time. At least 32 cars on the lead lap. Mark Martin up on the high side of the racetrack. Now racing alongside of Jeff Gordon. Positions changing every lap. It's anybody's race. No car, certainly has shown a domination of this race. Sterling Marlin is the driver up front right now. We'll be right back. Okay.
Hamilton's having a good race. We haven't mm -hmm. talked about him very much. here at Talladega. Just a very, very bad crash. Mark Martin is involved. So is Rusty Wallace, Brett Bodine, Elton Sawyer. One car overturned in the banking of turn number one, got up into the catch fence and came back onto the racetrack. I don't know who it was at the moment, but this is a very, very ugly looking crash. Boy, it just, once it went into that turn, once it started, Bob, it was, there's Ricky Rudd. He was involved. You see a lot of damage to his cars. The cars were running so close together, and uh, once this thing started, I mean, it was just everybody getting involved. The Derek Cope, as you say, he was involved. He's trying to get his car back around. Here it is again. Take a look. It's going to happen up front with uh, Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin running side by side. Okay, Martin goes a little high there. Gordon gets into him. They both have to back off, and then the jamming up starts, and they get into the wall on the outside. Others start jockeying around. There's Derek Cope. He thought he got through that for just a moment, but Mark Martin's going to come right back up in front of him. And is that Ricky Craven? Yes, it is. Ricky Craven in car number 41 that's flipping over, went up against the outside wheel fence, back down on the track, and was hit again. Yeah, he got hit again as the car was rolling toward the apron of the racetrack. So Ricky Craven is certainly one that we have a great deal of concern about. Jeff Gordon is okay. He's climbed out of his car though it's damaged very badly, but boy, Ricky Craven really took a horrible, horrible ride. Very reminiscent of Phil Parsons' crash a few years ago. Yes, man. it was. Okay, here they are. Gordon trying to go on the outside of Mark Martin. They make a little contact, and it sort of shoots Martin out into the wall. Then Gordon comes up, gets tagged, and spins around. And Ricky Craven, right in the middle of it, his car gets airborne. You can see it flipping up to the outside wall, just coming apart and then is hit down on the inside by Elton Sawyer. It looks like the car number 27. Ricky Craven may be out of the car. We'll confirm that in a moment. Here it is from Mark Martin's car. Okay, Mark just riding along. Everything's looking great as Terry Labonte goes by on the outside. And Mark starts to move up here, not realizing that Jeff Gordon is coming up on the outside of him. And then he gets into the wall, slams down onto the inside, and boy, it's quite loose. He made pretty heavy contact with Ward Burton. Let's look at it again. See just how fast it happens. Man. Tony Irvin was involved. And within a matter of five or six seconds, the whole thing can uh, unfold. There they're removing some of the debris and throwing it over the uh, crash wall. You can see the retaining fence there is, is rather damaged. That's where Ricky Craven flew up into it. It did its job, however, and threw the car right back onto the racetrack. Now there is Rusty Wallace's car, and his day apparently has come to an end, and a very big disappointment for him, as, of course, is the case with all these drivers. But Mark Martin had come from the back of the field to challenge for the lead. There's Ricky Rudd's badly damaged tied Ford. The 22 car of Ward Burton took a heck of a shot from Mark Martin as Mark lost control and slid across in front of the field. The 44 car of Jeff Purvis, who had stayed on the lead lap all day. And there is the QVC Ford of Jeff Bodine that they're trying to... Uh, salvage and get back into the race. We anticipate a red flag because there may be some damage up in turn number one that has to be fixed before we can go back to full speed racing. We'll be back in just a minute. 
When was that Phil Parsons crash? I saw it in your notes last night. Was it 88? 88, I'm thinking. Wow. Yeah, you're right. That was a good uh, yeah. comparison. Man, I hope Ricky's okay. So too. Okay. That's well, good. Ernie's day is over, isn't it? Yeah. So we lost 28, 6, 24, 1983. Thank you. Well, that's my Who does? Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I didn't think he overturned that many times. Mm. Got to show that real time, too. This is unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Wow. Mm. Red? Yes. As you can see, the red flag has been displayed. The cars have come to a stop at the top of the banking here in the Trioval. The reason, a multi-car and very, very bad looking crash in turn number one. John Kernan is with Rusty Wallace. And Rusty, what a, a wild ride out there for a lot of people, uh, but fortunately you're okay, but your car is not. Did you see it uh, happen before you? Did it just happen so fast you couldn't tell what was going on? It just happened real fast and it was just, uh the three wide racing going on in turn one. It's just unfortunate. I mean, we're doing it out there, but it's not really the right way to do it. It's unfortunate. Man, my car was flying today. It run good. We led for a while. I got back in the back. We we're making some chassis adjustments, and the car was good. Best one I ever had, but it's too bad it happened. But uh, I don't think I've ever seen that many cars tore up down in turn one or two. It was a bad deal. But uh, the car was getting clipped on the inside, clipped on the outside. Pretty aggressive drivers out there. That, that happens when you have a bunch of packs like this and everybody pretty much equal, doesn't it? Well, yeah, this particular type of racing, it's just it's inevitable. I've been in a bunch of crashes, you know, and I thought the day was one I could get out of. I think like every single race I've been in, there's always something that goes on. But uh, same thing, we all are going for that same coveted spot or trying to go for that little hole. And when you go three wide in a turn one, a lot of times it doesn't work. Well, that's Rusty Wallace. He is okay, but his car is damaged quite severely. But his crew is working on it, and they may try and get him back out there just to run some laps for points. Well, we have an even more dramatic angle of this crash, Ned, and uh, you can see Craven's car overturn there and fly up and then down the banking with several cars underneath as the car overturned in the air and came to the rest of the bank. Five cars went underneath him as he, uh, when he hit that outside wheel fence on top of the cement wall, and it threw it back across the racetrack, crossed over five cars. Now from Brett Bodine's in-car camera. Just listen. from Mark Martin's roof cam. Okay, this is where it, where it really started. It's gonna happen beside of him as he moves up the racetrack here. He'll touch Jeff Gordon. So I see Terry Labonte goes by, and then they're still, now they're coming in to turn one. There's where he touches Jeff Gordon, Jeff, John and Brady down on the inside, and then four, it breaks the center. The lights went out. Then. Now the real time on this angle. Watch this. Here 
right, Ned. Five cars passed underneath Ricky Craven when he was in the air, and Jerry is with Ricky Rudd. Well, Ricky obviously involved in this incident. His car on pit road, and uh, because of the red flag, the crew, Danny Marshford and crew, can't work on the car. Ricky, first of all, what happened from your vantage point out there? Well, Jerry, it looked like the 6 and the 24. I couldn't tell exactly. It looked like the 24 tried to put it in a hole that maybe wasn't there. Uh, turned the 6 sideways. He could have turned them loose, and he decided to leave his bumper in there and wrecked all of us. What was your involvement, Ricky, as far as uh, where, would, where did you get primarily most of your damage in the front end? Well, Jerry, it just, just kind of beat it up all around and knocked the front end out of alignment. And uh, like I said, once they started bouncing around, we were just kind of mixed up in the middle of it. And it filled my windshield full of oil, so I couldn't really tell you what happened after that. So I just kind of went along for the ride. Well, they are going to try to fix the car. You see the right front of this tide ride heavily damaged. The bars that support the front bumper have been pulled away. It's obviously towed out uh, most of the right front fender and right front bumper are sheared away. Also damaged. We get Corky to move around to the back of the car. We can show that... Uh, the left rear of the car, he did get hit from behind. Down here where it says Downey, that's been uh, shortened by about two or three feet. And you see and you see some of the other parts uh, of the car have also been shortened just for a little bit here. So, And Gordon's car has been shortened quite a bit. I mean, they just came by here a moment ago. Jeff, Jeff Gordon's car was shortened, as was the Jeff Purvis car. Bill Weber, you're up there. The Gordon car looks pretty well used up. Yeah, this, uh, this probably isn't even show car material here. Uh, badly banged in on the right hand side the rear bashed in the front end is cut up pretty bad i'm standing next to ray everham i don't believe he wants to talk we haven't seen hey, this car is pretty much done for ray yeah it's, you know what uh, we're trying to get it out and run a few laps if we can but it's you know it's obviously it's at a competition was jeff jeff able to say what happened no you could pretty much see what happened on tv though okay he's going to go ahead and work on his car jerry what we didn't see a moment ago and what Ricky Rudd fortunately probably couldn't see because all of his roofs are. Take a look at the roof. A car went over the in, Ricky Rudd's car in the air. And you see where this uh, car came across. There's tire marks, fender marks, depressed the rear glass, took almost took part of the flap off. And some race car in the air bounced off the right side roof panel of the Tide Ford. So another close call for Ricky Rudd, a heavily damaged car. Well, let's go with the Prejean Turner standing by with the defending champion. But well, Jeff Gordon has been checked out in the infield care center. And Jeff, first of all, you okay? Yeah, I'm I'm fine. Uh, you know, it's a uh, you know, it's a shame that 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 happened out there. It just uh, you know it gets real tight out there. And uh, I mean, you can you can blame anybody or everybody or nobody. You know, it just uh, it was one of those deals where uh, you know I was I was going for a hole. Everybody was going for a hole, and it got real tight uh, by the wall. And uh, I you know I don't think. Uh, uh, anybody could have could have done really much else. Uh, it's real unfortunate, you know. I never hate to get into Mark, uh, you know, of anybody. I mean, Mark, uh, you know, and I got together and we just started wrecking. Uh, but he didn't have any room on the inside of him, so uh, you know, it's just a kind of a squeeze play. What goes through your mind when you when that happens and you know what the rea what the result's going to be? Uh, it's one of the scariest feelings that you can ever imagine. Uh, you're sitting in there, sliding along about 180, 190 miles per hour, and you're just holding tight. And I mean, every time I opened my eyes, I got hit. So I closed my eyes when I, uh, you know, and, and, and then, you know, I, I'd be sliding along there and you think it's going to stop about that time. Boom, somebody has to hit you. And, uh, you know, it was the first time I'd been in a, a wreck quite like that. And it, it wasn't fun. Well, it wasn't a lot of fun, but fortunately, Jeff is OK. Now let's go to Bill Weber, who's uh, standing by with another driver who is involved in it. OK, Elton Sawyer's here and we're just talking about it. Elton, how did you see it? Well. You know, I don't know, it must have been 30 cars there bunched up. And the uh, the first thing I saw was the 24 car sideways, and the spotter said, go low. So we went low, and I thought we had it missed. And I don't know, I think Mark was the one that came off the wall. You know, just it was unfortunate. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty fast racetrack, obviously. You know, we just got to use our head a little bit more. Hopefully everybody's okay. I, I think the 41 car may have got up and flipped a couple times. Hopefully, you know, Ricky's okay. Okay, that's Elton Sawyer. He's already changed. He's done. John is with Mark Martin. Mark Martin being interviewed by uh, all the, the media here. And Mark, what a wild ride. What happened there? We all just ran out of room out there. Uh, just, you know, these cautions are a nightmare. You know, you get all these cars in a pack and everybody's brave and they're going to, you know, jump up out there in front and, and uh, try to hold that position. After 20, 30 laps, you know, everybody's handling starts settling out and the best guys work their way up to the front but that was just a mess out there it always is after after a caution 
and on a restart. And, uh, you know, there was, you know, there's not any use in placing any blame. We just ran out of flat, ran out of room out there for what we were trying to do. I saw you walking out of the care center. You were limping a little bit. How's your foot? It's fine. I just got a little bit of a bruise, and it's probably more of a, you know, it, it, it hurts more now than it will later. It's just, uh, it just, I just hit it on something. All right, well, that must Mark Martin. His uh, right foot's just a little bit sore, but other than that, he's okay. Let's go to Bill Weber's with Ernie Urban. And first, let's establish, Ernie, that you're okay. Yeah, I'm all right. You know, uh, it's a shame, you know, uh, we, you know, had a great run, and, um, you know, we, we get back into racing with people we shouldn't be racing with. Uh, and it's all, it's all re a result of what happened after qualifying when they, when they blew our motor up. How did you see it start? Well, I didn't really get to see it start. I mean, um, I just, the, the only thing I saw was, was Mark Martin get spun and, you know, it, whatever happened, I'm not sure before that. You know, I just saw Mark go across the track and, and then I was behind the 10 car and I was on the brakes and I run in the back of the 10 car, not real bad. I think he's still, still going. So, uh, you know, not too bad though. Now, when you say it's a result of your motor being damaged after qualifying, you want to explain that for the fans that didn't, weren't with us on Friday? Well, I, I need to, um, I mean, you know, we were just down on power the whole time, you know. Um, the, the guys have done a tremendous job trying to, to get back what we had, but we had an awesome motor, and, you know, we got to messing with people we shouldn't have been messing with, and, um, you know, you just get back there like that, you know. But what happened is is, is they dynoed our motor, and, um, you know, they, ne they don't even have a dyno figure, but uh, they, they tried to dyno it, and it broke the motor. Okay, that's Ernie Irvin. It was a great return here, but he's done for today. A lot of top contenders have been taken out in this crash, or at least involved in it. We're going to show you a graphic here listing those that were involved in one way or another in the wreck. And some of those there are were certainly potential winners, Ned. Yeah, they certainly were. They just, many of them had led the race. Uh, Rusty Wallace and Ernie Irvin, Mark Martin had all led the race. Ricky Rudd had run good all day long. Just a shame that uh, this many cars have been affected here. We're still trying to find out the condition of Ricky Craven, whose car took the wildest ride down in turn number one. When we get any information, we'll pass it along to you as soon as we can. <laughs> yes. Okay. ESPN's coverage of the Winston Select 500 from Talladega Super Speedway being brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. And by Chevrolet, one car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR, genuine Chevrolet. We are under a red flag here at Talladega because of an accident down in turn number one. Ricky Craven's car flew up into that catch fence. They're going to have to repair it before we can go back to green. John Kernan has an update on his condition. Well, I just talked to Ricky's crew chief, Charlie Presley, and Charlie tells me that Ricky is okay. He's alert. He's speaking, but he's got a, a big old raspberry on his arm is what Charlie is telling me. So that's some good news. He says he is shaken up, but they're not sure the extent of the injuries. But once again, Charlie Presley, Ricky's crew chief, telling me that Ricky is okay, he's alert, and he is talking. And he, uh, other than that, uh, we have no further reports on his condition, Bob. I'll take a raspberry on his arm right now, Ned. <laughs> yes, sir. For Man. What he went through. That's that's good news to hear that there's that's the good. car. Boy, you're right, Bob. That, that looks very much like the car that Phil Parsons wrecked here back in 1983. 
down in turn one. Not much left of it. Uh. And in fact, it's over here in the That's Talladega right. uh, Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame here yep. at the International Motorsports Hall of Fame. Here it is once again at the top of the of the line are Martin and Gordon, and that's where the trouble began. Looked like maybe Mark Martin tried to come down, but John Andretti was there, mm -hmm. and uh, Gordon was trying to go by on the outside, and boy, it just opened the door to Looks melee. Like Craven's car was launched over Mark Martin when he was hit by Hut Strickland, and when the car did get launched, it overturned a couple of times, went into the the debris fence and then down on the racetrack quite hard on the top and then it came to rest at the bottom of the racetrack Jerry is with a driver who is having a great run Michael Waltrip and Bob before we talk about that they brought though when you brought the Craven car by a moment ago the drivers who were out of their cars here under the red flag including Michael everyone sort of took a gasp when they saw the car come by but Michael it is good news that uh, Raspberry and otherwise that at this point in time Craven is awake and alert that's great news and you know just hats off to NASCAR for for making us build these cars and the teams for building them so safely the the thing I noticed about the car when it went by the driver's compartment was still intact and then, uh, when I looked at that I said well I hope that's before I heard the news I said I, I think Ricky might be okay and sure enough he was that conjure up memories of Bristol a few years ago for you uh, yeah a little bit I guess I thought about it I was looking at it to see if he had a worse wreck than me but I don't it looked like it might still be I still might own the honor of the worst ever crash uh, car sitting in a museum right behind the racetrack here but uh you know that was a bad day but this has been a good day for the sit go for thunderbird eddie lynn and all the wood brothers and danny glad they've just given me a great car there we're befumbled as to why it didn't qualify too well uh if you can be that i don't know what that means that word but uh that's confused at talladega if you look it up in the dictionary <laughs> but fumble <laughs> but uh it's running good now and we feel like we can be a, a factor for it's over you know it's uh it's it's the sit go for thunderbird is is that strong do you get some help? I mean, who, who's been working with you out there? I know some of the guys, some of the people have teammates. They got the 88, the 28, the Roush cars have teammates, the Hendrick cars. Uh, who helps Michael? Well, uh, Mark works real good with me. He and I work well together. We, uh, you know, had to bail out on each other a time or two, but all in all, it works real well. Now he's tore up. But uh, those two cars behind me, the Richard Petty car driven by Bobby Hamilton and uh, uh, Dino the dinosaur, dinosaur machine, man, they make my car go and they in return like the way their car feels behind mine so i think i got me some help there and i feel like that uh it, you know just then we had a shot at them we could have run at them and uh, made the finish real fun so uh, i think that'll be the case i'd like to say hi to mom and pa back in owensboro and uh, caitlin back in north carolina you need to come work qualifying more often on friday you have pretty good luck on sunday i was a little confused about that deal i thought you had you know benny being involved there'd be uh, hors d'oeuvres and sweets and so forth no food not much of anything so uh You'll have to talk to me about that. Well, Benny got six, and we, strip, we uh, shipped the shrimp home. All right, well, thanks for having me on there. I enjoyed it. Michael Walter running fifth here at Talladega and thinks he may have a shot at it. His car awfully strong here, at least through this part of the race. Bill Weber is with Jeff Purvis, another driver involved in the crash. And standing here with Jeff Purvis, uh, your car doesn't look too bad. I wish this was a car we was racing. This, this is our backup car. It, uh, well, they had a bad wreck out there, didn't they? I just, uh, I really hate that, uh, hate we ended up in this situation. This MCA's, you know, come on board and help sponsor this car with David Lee Murphy, and it just, uh, just a bad day. Yeah, what did you see out there, Jeff? What happened? I'd rather not even comment on it, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, they, they should have been a little bit more give and take out there, I believe. Okay, that's Jeff Purvis, and uh, he's finished for today. You know, and I think one thing we are hearing, nobody uh, is laying blame on anybody else. It was just an accident that can happen at Talladega when you are running so fast. Like Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin said, right. you see a hole and you go for it. And yeah, once contact is made, when you're in that big pack of cars, big things happen. There's the work that is being done on the catch fence in turn number one, where Ricky Craven's car <laughs> flew into it. We'll take a break and be back with more in just a moment. and speaking he's been taken to the Careway Medical Center in Birmingham for further evaluation Ricky complaining of back pain but uh, the good news is hey he can complain about that back pain so they've taken him on the helicopter taking him to the Careway Medical Center for further evaluation now let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch who's with Sterling Marlin 
Amazing when these guys get out of the race cars, the first thoughts are to their fellow drivers. The first thing Sterling asked me was, number one, how's Bill Elliott? Number two, how's Ricky Craven? And both have been taken. That helicopter a moment ago, Sterling was Craven, but he's been awake and alert. Uh, now about the good news. Your race, I mean, as Ned Jarrett put it, you went to the back to the front one time and then did it again. It's to prove you could do it again. Well, we had uh, started the race, and uh, the car run hot and had to stop and pull some tape off and cool it down. And I was kind of worried, and uh, the car was really running good. And the second time, we just took a gamble because... If the, if the track, if the race had went green, uh, you know, we couldn't have made it. And come in, got some tires and got some fuel, and, and we could have made it on one more stop. So, looks like we're gonna have to do it again. They, uh, you know, we're on a window here for fuel mileage, and uh, we're gonna have to probably come back in, top it off uh, to make it. So, uh, we'll have to see if we do it again. Now, your car owner Larry McClure and some others have been lobbying with NASCAR to let you run two or three laps under caution, then come let you come in and top it off. That way, everyone could make it the rest of the way. If they don't do that. You and a few others are going to come up, what, two or three laps short? Yeah, you are. So, you know, we don't want to see a boring race, and, uh, you know, especially come down a fuel mileage deal. And uh, I think about maybe three cars can make it, and uh, a lot of rest of us got to stop. So uh, we'll do what we got to do. And, you know, the draft's working good here, and uh, our car's working good, so we'll just try to do what we got to do and get back to the front. Let me go quickly to show you what not to have happen at Talladega. Folks, this was our track back a little bit ago. This is the piston that came out of this guy's car at Daytona. See the scorched inside? That's a burn piston. Hey, that's wrong. Don't do that. Don't need to do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sterling Marlin busy. Let's go back up pit road where Bill Weber is standing by with Terry Labonte. And Terry just got a drink and stands here. Uh, you're having a pretty good run. You're seventh right now. Well, not bad. Uh, our Kellogg Chevy's been running pretty good for us all day. We've been close to the front all day. So. You can see it from there. We can see <laughs> the front anyway, yeah. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, go back out there and go caution free the rest of the day and uh, have a good finish. You make it to the finish? After we come in and, and top off, we can. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, some of these guys are going to fall out now, but a lot of close racing out there. Well, you know, it's typical restrictor plate racing. It's awful close. The cars are so even, and it just takes one mistake and uh, takes a lot of innocent people out with it. Okay, that's Terry Labonte. He'll restart seventh, and they'll come in and get some fuel. And John is with Mike Wallace. Well, Mike, kind of surveying the damage. Uh, you're okay, right? But the car's torn up pretty bad. Well, it is torn up pretty bad, John, you know. We didn't have a great day going anyway, but we were up there trying to outgas them. Hopefully, it was going to continue to go green for a long time and uh, get back on the lead lap. And uh, you know, those guys all wrecked up in front of us, and I seen the smoke just seen the smoke instantly. So I got slowed down. New Rusty was behind me, so I thought we were, I got turned to the bottom of the racetrack and thought I'd miss the whole wreck. Matter of fact, I did miss the whole wreck. Unfortunately, but when the car got in the grass, it turned back around and got up the racetrack and hit the left side. It, I can't figure out how these cars can go up the racetrack so hard, you know, from being on the bottom, but uh, it's a shame. It's, uh, you know, unfortunately, I hate to see it for Rusty. He was behind us there, and he would led this race, and I thought his voodoos of this place were over with, but I guess he got all gathered back up, and I just hope everybody's okay out of it. I know some guys took some hard hits there, and uh, everybody was pretty concerned about Ricky Craven, so I guess he must have got the worst of it. So. Yeah, I can tell you, Ricky, uh, they've taken him to Caraway in Birmingham, and he's complaining of back pain, but he was alert. Yeah, from what I understand, he must have took a hell of a ride because uh, the whole thing in the care center, everybody's wanting to know how he was, and all his crew looked pretty shook up about it. So uh, hopefully everybody, he'll be fine, and Ricky get back, and Bill, I guess, got hurt in that earlier at Wreck, and hopefully he'll be fine too, and we'll just, I guess we'll all go to Sears Point and try it again. Well, Mike Wallace is sitting here uh, in the garage area. They were working on his car, and they, they will try and get out to uh, run some laps to finish this race, Bob. Other drivers have uh, gathered around to talk with each other about how they're doing on this particular day. There's Jeremy Mayfield on the left and Kenny Wallace with his back to you. There's Jeremy Mayfield is 29 laps down as a result of problems earlier. Uh, sort of an innocent spin out by him, but he anyway lost a lot of time. From this catch fence up in turn number one was put here after Jimmy Horton went out of the ballpark in the uh, July race in 1993 and uh, they are having to do some welding up there so it's going to be a while longer before we go back to green flag racing and we will show you once again why we are under this red flag and what caused the damage in turn number one several cars involved the flipping car belongs to ricky craven but the report is that he is awake and alert although on his way to caraway in birmingham we'll be right back along with Ned Sherritt, John Kernan, Jerry Punch, 
and Bill Weber. And we are now ready to resume the race in a couple of laps. They are opening the pits for those drivers that are on the lead lap, and there are 20 of them. The red flag was for 31 minutes to prepare the catch fence in turn number one. So here comes Sterling Marlin, Dale Jarrett, and the others on the lead lap down for what hopefully is going to be their final pit stop. Yeah, Sterling Marlin was saying that it might uh, be a little bit close for some of them as far as fuel is concerned, finishing the race. They'll put four new tires on, <coughs> most of them. Earnhardt. There's Jarrett getting four tires on his car. Aaron Abadi is already rolling out. Steve Grissom is also. There's Grissom at the bottom of your screen. Here comes Terry Labonte and Sterling Marlin. Dale Earnhardt comes out. Dale Jarrett is behind him. Michael Waltrip has pitted right down at the uh, end of pit road and got out, I believe, before those two. So. And ready, uh, there's Ted Musgrave, Robert Presley, and the 43 car is having trouble here. Yeah, apparently not, must have choked down or something, having trouble getting refired. Bobby Hamilton was being shown in the seventh position when uh, the red flag came out. Right now, they're having trouble getting the car going again. The green will come out in a couple of more laps. We'll take a break and be back in just a moment to Talladega. Thank you. Here's the view from the Pontiac pace car back on the field. We're at Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. There are 133 laps now completed out of 188. Well, it has not been a good day here at Talladega for several drivers. Bill Elliott had a very frightening crash earlier in the race. He came off of corner number two. The car got airborne. It did not flip over back on the wheels. Jerry, what's the update? Well, Bob, we showed the bill was airlifted to Caraway Regional Medical Center in Birmingham, what they thought may have been a dislocation of the left hip. Now, dislocation by virtue of the fact that when, you, when a patient comes in, ordinarily the foot is rotated out, and you hope the hip is just purely dislocated. Usually, though, it means that there is a fracture, and that has been the diagnosis of Bill Elliott. He has a fractured left hip. We are told he will probably go into surgery sometime early tomorrow morning. Orthopedist on his way to the hospital to evaluate Bill, but probably be operated on to have the hip fixed tomorrow morning. All right, and then there was also a uh, bad crash, even worse than that, down in turn number one. This involves several cra uh, cars. There's Ricky Craven turning over and over into the catch fence. That's why we went red. Jumped over about five cars, flipping down the banking. And Ricky Craven has also been airlifted to Caraway Medical Center, but he was reported to be awake and alert. So possibly no serious injury to Ricky Craven. All right, we're going to take one more break before the green flag comes out here at Talladega as we resume our coverage of the Winston Select 500.
first time this year. <clears throat> Hmm, he's not shown on here. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston Select 500 is being brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, proud sponsor of the Miller Racing Team. We race for beer. By Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings. And by the more than 1,250 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Well, leading this race is local hero Steve Grissom, and he is leading a NASCAR Winston Cup race for the first time in 1996. So what are the pit strategies now from here on? First of all, John Kernan. Well, Bob, Robert Presley has been running in the top five, top ten all day long, just came in. He topped off with fuel. Andy Petrie says now they can make it the rest of the way. They also had changed four tires the first time in. Terry Labonte's crew changed left side tires only and took on fuel. They will make it the rest of the way. And Bill Engle tells me Steve Grissom is going to try to make it the rest of the way because they have nothing to lose. Dale Jarrett still fighting, fighting a handling problem, getting into turn three. They couldn't run the risk of going to the rear. They had to stay out. They are going to be right on the edge of their window. Same with the four bunch. Sterling Marlin stopped on the lap previous. They topped it off. They also are at the edge of their window. Unfortunately, sometime on the edge, you fall off. Jerry Punch. Earnhardt can go 56 laps. They have 54 remaining. They think they can make it. They shouldn't be a problem. However, the 21 car, Michael Waltrip, they've got to go 54. The most they have gone today, the most they've calculated they can go is 52. But hey, they're going to roll the dice and try to pick one off. After a long red flag period, we are ready to go back to racing. The green flag comes out, and the Winston Select 500 is on once again. Terry Labonte running in second position. Michael Waltrip, and a great effort for him, is running in third. And there are the top ten on your scoring pylon, as you can see, 52 laps to go. Now, last year in this race, Rusty Wallace tried to go 62 laps for the win. He ran out with five laps to go. But as you heard, most people think that they can go the rest of the distance on the fuel that they have. As you say, it'll be close for some. There's Kenny Slater. He's uh, one lap down. Remember, he had a flat tire and had to make a green flag pit stop and went a lap down. There are 19 cars on the lead lap. And Steve Grissom holds them off for one lap under green. He got his first top 10, Steve Grissom did, here in this race in 1994. He's a hometown favorite. He grew up just down the road here in Gadsden, Alabama. Was a football player, and he's leading this race. Caution is out, Caution and there's, there's the reason. Ricky Rudd's hood has come off. So those that were wondering about being able to make it, they might can come in now and cap off. Yep. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll say, well, we don't use as much fuel during caution flags. And you can see the hood is gone off Ricky's tied uh, forward. So it'll be interesting to see. They'll race back to the line. Steve Grissom maintaining the lead right now. Terry Labonte dropping kind of low on the racetrack, letting several go by. Jerry, what happened to Ricky's car? In the front of the tie port a little bit ago, even though they had used bungee cord to hold the front of the hood down, with the whole front bumper and grill gone, so much air under that hood, it's like a wind tunnel, it basically, air got underneath the hood and broke the hinges, just snapped the hinges at the back of the hood and let the hood come flying off. All right, so the debris will have to be picked up here in the tri-oval before we go back to racing. There is Rudd making his way down pit road with the hood gone on that car. We'll be back with more in just a moment from Talladega Super Speedway, the Winston Select 500. Okay. Okay.
<laughs> well, either one of them would be good. Yeah. 88, 21. Yeah. Like no, 21's not coming in. Oops, no, nope. nope. he's changing the left side corners. Thank you. I mean, you gotta, you gotta work them. No, he didn't. What was the deal there on Marlin? I thought they were going to change the tires, but they yeah, didn't. Yeah, Schrader's car looks like it's running pretty good. So I, mean, I think you might be able to pull up in front of that high line with him down there. I hope he don't leave me to dry. You know, he might get up there and me not. That's usually what happens when he gets out of the way. They just sit there. Sounds like trickle. Be a good fast car behind me. Oh. I thought the 88 car came in. That was uh, the 15 car. Mm -hmm. Oh, a blue car. I, think. I was hoping the 88 car would come in. <laughs> we'll be going back to green next time around. They're about halfway down the back stretch. Up front, Steve Grissom and Michael Waltrip, two drivers who have never won in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. We did have several cars come down and top off with fuel, including the number four car of Sterling Marlin. Yeah, they, it was reported from the pits there a moment ago that they were still on the edge of their window as far as fuel was concerned. So they ran a few laps out there. So maybe this now should put them in good shape where they don't have to worry about it. Looking back from Michael Waltrip's car onto Terry Labonte behind. Dick Trickle there in the 19 car. They're in the 33 degree banking in turn number four coming on to the tri-oval. And they will get the green flag this time around. It will be the completion of lap number 140. Green at lap 141. The senior PGA golf tournament coming up after the conclusion of our coverage of the Winston Select 500. Here is the green flag waving once again at the field oh. back in competition. Oh, close competition looking back from Ken Schrader's car onto Dick Trickle. By the way, we showed you a sh couple of segments of shop talk and some of the uh, paraphernalia and uh, t-shirts and so forth you can buy the phone lines are going to be open till nine o'clock tonight so go ahead and call up an order Terry Labonte chose to dip down behind Dick Trickle there and as a result he's been passed by Dale Jarrett here's Dale Earnhardt already back up there near the front and he topped off with fuel there a little bit ago Michael Walter goes high in the turn Jarrett comes under he makes it three wide coming through there the only one of those cars not on the lead lap in that group is Dick Trickle. He is a lap down, and he's third in line. Well, Michael Walter dropping back there. Ken, I don't know what the situation is with Michael. But... Uh, Michael's still second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was a red <laughs> card, but it Ken was Schrader. I think Schrader yeah. was dropping back. I beg your pardon, fans. Didn't mean to get <laughs> excited there. Michael is up there in great shape. And That's there is the here. four car on the move to the front once again. As we've documented so many times, he has the car apparently to come in and uh, lose track positions because he can make it up. And now Dale Jarrett is up on the high side with a lot of momentum and Terry Labonte going up there with him. $100,000 will be in Dale Jarrett's bank account if he can win here today. And the second leg of the Winston Million, if he wins three of the four, he gets a million dollars. And look at this three of rest as Earnhardt goes to second. Jared right alongside him, and Michael Walter gets shuffled back a little bit. Earnhardt staying up on the high side of the racetrack, along with Terry Labonte. Now, Earnhardt is a pretty big bonus, too, if he can win this race from uh, Winston as a result of being the point leader. $70,000 is at stake if the winner of the race is also the points leader at its conclusion. But maybe the car that we should keep a slight eye on at this point is Sterling Martin because that car has been so strong all day. There he is on the inside line, fighting his way once again to the front of the field, going three wide, make it 
four wide in the triangle. Well, he just blew off two or three cars there with a little effort, it looked like. Sterling Marlin has won three races here and four at Daytona. A total of 33 races under the restrictor plate rules. That car has been so good, that four car on these restrictor plate tracks. Ernie Irvin won with it several times here and at Daytona. And and Chris trying, to, trying to break the path down the back stretch. Yeah, exactly what he was trying to do. They made a great pit stop, got out in front of everybody else, Steve Grissom did. And he's been running up there with the leaders all day long, so he has to get race cars. Here's Michael Walker going on the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Dale Garrett coming right along with him. Those two Fords trying to hook up together. Michael gets close Ooh, to man, Grissom. Man, sure does. I and think he gave him a nudge. Might have. In any case, Michael Waltrip is now in the lead. Dale Jarrett second. Here comes Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt in the bottom of the racetrack as Steve Grissom is hung out to dry at the moment. Steve. Here's Jarrett now yep. going for the lead. Dale Jarrett, who started on the outside of row number one, clear behind takes the, the lead rather the easily from clear, Michael dude, Walter. Clear. Terry Labonte right, hang on, comes hang in on. the second. That's Michael Walter, spotter, telling him to hang on. He's clear behind that five to try to hang on there. a report on the current leader, Dale Jarrett. Well, I just watched on the monitor down here as Dale Jarrett moved into the lead and kept his car pinched down in three and four. I talked to him during the red flag, and he said his car is fine in turns one and two, but he hasn't been able to hold it down in three and four. He said if he got down to the race, he's not sure he could hold it down there. Well, the team, when I walked back down here, told me, well, we're going to fix that on this next pit stop. And judging from where he's running now and how he took the lead a lap ago, it looks like they did, and Dale Jarrett has the lead. Moving up, he's now in eighth spot. Make that seventh. First six cars have broken away just a little bit, leaving Marlin to catch up. And here comes Earnhardt, closing in on Michael Walter for third. That big bad black Chevrolet running right up there on the bumper of Michael Walter. Now Sterling Marlin has. Uh, you know, he has nobody helping him back there. You said those six cars had broken away, but I think his car is fast enough, and he'll get enough of the drafting air that he can catch up to them. There, there are the six cars. Here he is, still running by himself, but I think that he's picking up enough of their air, and as fast as his car is, that he'll be able to catch him. That car has been very strong all day. One and a half seconds behind in seventh position. There are the top six as they run nose to tail. Jarrett with about a two car length advantage on Terry Labonte, and then Labonte with about a three car length advantage on Michael Walter. And you can see how close Earnhardt is to Walter. I think he's just sitting there sizing up Earnhardt right now. Still got 41 laps to go. There's a long time. There's Sterling Marlin. He's definitely closed in on that lead group. Yeah, that's not surprising. I, I figured that he would be able to, to catch the, as fast as his car is. And he's up the now he's going to get some help there in a moment because those cars are coming up on him. Yeah, he dropped back to almost two seconds now, but we'll get some drafting help as four cars catch up with him, including Dick Trickle, Ted Musgrave, Wally Donovan, and Mike Skinner. Now, Dick Trickle is one lap down in 20th position. 19 cars still being shown on the lead lap. And yeah, that, this five-car draft right here is definitely going to help Sterling Marvel. Knocked it down about a tenth. The 28 car of Ernie Irvin, our.
our pole sitter for this event is back in the race after being involved in that tangle down to turn number one. Down to 1.76 seconds for Sterling Marlin. Was it going to be two, three laps before they catch the yeah. group or less than that? Yeah, it's less than that, maybe, because he's close enough now, and with the help he's getting from behind, he's going to get a lot of help in front. And the closer he gets, the more help he's going to get from those up in front of him, so he'll just zoom right up there. By the time they get back to start finish line, he's going to be pretty close on it. He just picked up a half. Oh, more than that now. Picked up about seven-tenths of a second. been awesome. He has led 26 laps so far today. We've had 14 leaders. Now he's beginning to pull away from Dick Trickle a little bit as he gets closer to these others. He's running some awfully fast laps there. Don't have a stopwatch on him, but he is running some very, very fast laps as he comes up on these cars right now. Everybody's staying in line at the moment with still 38 laps to go, except Marlon. He goes to the inside of Steve Grissom at the end of the backstretch. Yeah, he wants to get to the front if he possibly can. If you don't have to run side by side, which he didn't there, didn't have to run side by side long. I think Steve Grissom realized that. He didn't want to run side by side with him, he, so he fell back in line behind him. He's trying to follow him up through the pack. That'd be his best bet. There he comes. Picked off another move. Now he's going to pick off Bobby Hamilton, or try to. Now he's going to try Earnhardt. Looks like Hamilton's going to go to the bottom side and help him, maybe. Well, maybe not. Earnhardt goes high, Marlin goes low. Mar uh, what Earnhardt wants to do is latch on to Marlin. He knows that Marlin has an awfully fast race car, and he'd like to try to move with him right on up to the front. That is an awesome race car, oh, Sterling really Marlin. Look there, just pull out and try to make another move. Now we have Steve Grissom, Wally Dahlenbach, and Ted Musgrave, three abreast. Now they get to two as Marlin gets to third. Yep. That one Pittman engine is singing for Sterling Marlin. Jarrett continues to lead with Terry Labonte second. But now Sterling Marlin is third. Bobby Hamilton runs in fifth position. Hamilton's best finish this year is sixth at Martinsville and Richmond. He's got a fifth going today. And it looks like the line may be forming to the inside of Dale Jarrett. Very definitely. The Chevrolets are teaming up together there. And they're going to blow Dale Jarrett's forward off. One, two, three. And the Pontiac will join with the GM. Yeah, the Pontiac will come along as well. So Jarrett got hung out there on the outside. Bobby Hamilton and Michael Waltrip and Ted Musgrave looks like they're also going to be able to pass Jarrett or will they? Well, yep, they're coming right yep. on the inside. Jarrett will go back to the inside. That's where his car seems to work the best. So he'll try to hook onto those forwards and see if he can work his way back up there. And now you got to believe that Sterling Marlin is just biding his time. Dale Jarrett going low beneath Bobby Hamilton again. Grissom and Dolan back behind Dale and Dick Trickle. Marlin looking to the inside of Terry Labonte. Yeah, he didn't make that move. Earnhardt didn't go with him. In fact, Earnhardt decided he'd come up on the outside of Marlin. And it's going to cost Marlin. It sure is going to cost him. He drops from second all the way back to fourth or fifth, depending upon whether Ted Musgrave can get around him. Rusty Wallace back out on the racetrack. So several of the cars that were involved in the big incident down in turn number one are rejoining the race here late. I think Jarrett will go with Marlin here. If Jarrett's car likes the inside, and he figures that's his best shot trying to get back up towards the front. And Marlin gets by Ted Musgrave pretty easily, but I don't know if Jarrett can get by that easy or not. But there you see from that from Musgrave's car looking down at Jarrett. 
And yep. Musgrave comes back up, so Garrett was not able to clear Musgrave. And that's going to cost them if they aren't careful. That four car draft in front of them will get away if they aren't careful. And look at Dolan back making a three wide into turn number one. Well, Rusty Wallace had a great run going for a while. Unfortunately, he was involved in that accident down in turn number one, but he is back in the race. Now, True Value has a $10,000 reward. They call it the uh, $1,000 reward, I should say, the Man of the Race Award. It went to Rusty Wallace last week for winning the Goodies Headache Powder 500. It's donated to the driver's favorite charity. In this case, it went to the Rusty Wallace Charitable Foundation, which contributes to the Brenner's Children's Hospital and the Center for the Prevention of Child Abuse. So a good award there by True Value, $1,000. thousand dollars in this one Ned it's still anybody's race it yes is. it really is I don't know it's uh it's still up for grabs that is for sure those four race cars right there are awfully good Dale Garrett finally did clear Ted Musgrave so he is catching back up to that uh, front portion riding with Michael Walker as he rides along behind Dale Earnhardt Michael is third Eddie Wood there, sharing his driver on. This would be a great uh, finish for the Wood brothers. Yeah, his, wait, Michael having never won. Yeah. His best finish, as a matter of fact, this year was at Atlanta, ninth. So he's got his best run of the year going. Our Western Auto mechanic of the race go to the co-winners, Lynn and Eddie Wood. Wrenches on Michael Waltrip's car. They're all around. They're all around. Say the four is the only run on the bike. No good on top. <laughs> you can <laughs> say that again. <laughs> yeah, they're telling that the four car can only run on the bottom of the racetrack. He can't run up high. And Dale Jarrett's in a similar situation. That's Eddie Wood that was doing that talking. Shoots to the inside in the triangle. It's alongside Dale Earnhardt. Still got one underneath, one underneath. Still there. 16 will come and help us. Well, 16 didn't come and help. 16's him. helping 88 now. Keep digging, dude. Hang on. Look, those guys call the race for it. They're, they're telling what's going yeah, on out there. Doing great play by play here, yeah. man, while you and I can sit back and watch. Yeah. Steve Grissom there caught down on the inside. Here's Marlin going for second. In a bit once again. This is where he tried last lap and couldn't get it pulled off, but now he's got a little bit more help from Dale Jarrett, it looks like. And Marlon still running side by side with Dale Earnhardt. This helps Terry Lombardi pull away a little bit. Now Ted Musgrave lines up alongside Dale Jarrett. Yep, he's going to go with Earnhardt. And now everybody Ooh. coming up there to get in on the action. Also joins the group. That's the blue car there at the back of the field, along with Bobby Hamilton. Bobby having a great, Bobby having a great run here today again. He had a great run in the Daytona 500. Started in 35th position, right there with the lead pack. There are 11 cars in here, and nine of them are on the lead lap. Dick Triple is and neither is Mike Skinner, but everybody else is battling for position. Terry Labonte is just hanging out there by himself. Of course, those cars running side to side back there. That's helping him. Ooh, Earnhardt and Marlin get close to each other. They've been close a couple of times. Jared's going to go with Earnhardt with uh, Marlin on the bottom now. Try it one more time down there. Now Marlin clears Musgrave, but Jared doesn't clear it.
Uh, that's Ward Burton, isn't it, that they're uh, right. going around there with a badly damaged right side. Terry Labonte finished 26th in this race last year. He leads the field at the moment with tw less than 27 laps to go. Wally Dobbenbach moves up. Goes to the inside of Dick Trickle. Now he's passing those two cars that are not on the lead lap. Looking at Wally from Dick Trickle's in-car camera. Well, it doesn't look like he can see very good. I can't see very good out of his window. Yeah, field. the sun is uh, really creating yeah. a glare there. But your eyes get focused, and once you've been in there doing that for a while, you sort of get, your eyes get focused, and he can see better than we can through that. John Kernan has more on this run by Wally Dallenbach. Wally has always seemed to run well here at Talladega, and he uh, had some high hopes coming in here for this race to finish maybe in the top five, maybe even have a chance to win the race. But he's really looking forward to going out to Sears Point next week. For the first time in his Winston Cup career, he has helped more or less design and build a road course car. The Budmoor crew has built a car specifically for the road courses, and Wally has had input from start to finish. So look for Wally Dahlenbach Jr. next week. If he doesn't uh, win today, he may have a good shot at winning next week on the road course. Dahlenbeck's best finish of the year has been a six in the opening event at Daytona. Terry Levine pulling yeah. down to get it every little bit of draft he can to get up on Jeff Ladai, who's out there just making laps. And uh, every little bit of draft he can get him. So he's got him out there. There's a couple of car length leads. He's coming up on another car that he's getting some draft off of. They black flag the 28 car, by the way, earlier, and just not able to go fast enough to be safe out there. So they have black flag Ernie Irvin. Meanwhile, the field off the second corner and down the back stretch with less than 25 laps to go. It's Terry Labonte right now, but a lot of potential winners in this one. and there are less than 23 laps to go in this one when we will be switching to the seniors golf. Here's Sterling Marlin trying to go up on the outside. Somebody said a while ago his car wouldn't work high. Well, he's trying it high on the outside of Dale Jarrett and Ted Musgrave is going to go with him. Terry Labonte is still at the front of the field with Earnhardt running second. Now Dale Jarrett and Ted Musgrave are side by side through the tri-oval as we watch Michael Waltrip, Sitco Ford. Well, Marlin just going right on up through there, going for the lead here now. And he's going to get the lead. That's where he likes to run, down on the bottom of the racetrack. He had to go up high, but now he's able to take the lead from Terry Labonte on the bottom side of turn number two. Sterling Marlin now leads the Winston Select 500. And it is Dale Earnhardt and Dale Jarrett in third and fourth. Ted Musgrave running up high there in fifth place. Let's take a look at this second pack here, Ned, that includes Robert Preston and John Andretti and Rick Mann. 
fast than others. Well, they're being very disciplined there, Bob, running in single file while these drivers up here are jockeying back and forth and making a lot of passes, and that could uh, let them catch up. With as many laps to go as we have, they're probably going to be able to catch up to the lead group and make it about a 17-car shootout for the lead. Could happen. There are 17 cars on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt to the bottom side of Dale Jarrett. Well, Jarrett just passed him on the last lap, and now he comes right back past him. Oh, there's a big bug. <laughs> <laughs> race from the pole position that was in July of 1995. Jeff Gordon has decided to come back into the race. The DuPont refinishes Chevrolet is badly damaged but able to pick up some positions possibly and get a few more points. That's exactly right. He's being shown 35th place right now but he can uh, pick up at least uh, two or three or maybe four or five positions and that uh, could make a big difference at the end of the year. second to fourth, Terry Labonte up two, and Dale Jarrett up two. Craven would lose two positions, Rudd one, Musgrave would lose one, Hamilton up three, and Rusty Wallace down two. And we'll show you 11 through 15 also, as everybody there mostly stays the same, except Bobby Labonte, who moves up one. Bill Elliott will go down three. He has been out of the race since his accident on about lap 78. You wonder if Bill Elliott will be able to run next week at Sonoma, Ned. Yeah, with a hip uh, operation, they have to do surgery on that. It would, it would be doubtful if he would be able to. We can only speculate as to who might replace him, but we will be in Sonoma next week for the latest. Somebody else recovering from hip surgery is my mom. I'd like to say hi to her today. <laughs> Certainly wish her well. And Chevy Furlan's grandmother also. Here's a Fran Field summary. Steve Grissom up from 23rd starting position. Bobby Hamilton from 39th to 9th. And Wally Dallin back from 35th to 8th. Well, there are six cars that are sort of broken away right now. Actually, there are seven he's cars there, but Mike Skinner is lap down. He's running right behind the Mount Pelosa. Always back. got the 19, which is the lap down this shown out of the race here were involved in that turn one accident including Mark Martin Craven who has been airlifted to Caraway Medical Center in Birmingham for further evaluation and Bill Elliott who has suffered a broken hip broken femur we understand well is there anyone who can't make it on fuel I don't know and is there anyone who wants to put 
any money down on any one of these guys right now. <laughs> I'm not willing to. <laughs> no, I don't think you can count any of those six out that are there right now. Although, it would sort of have to favor Marlin because of how yeah. long that car has been here all day long. And he right. has gone to the front at will. Yep. Sometimes all by himself without yeah. the help of the draft, he's yeah. gone forward. Yeah. Getting pretty close to Terry Labonte now. Terry started to go low. Derek started to go now. We understand that maybe Wally Dolan back has lost his cylinder. Oh, that's uh, too bad. Yeah, really a pretty good one. You can see on your scoring pylon that he's running in eighth position, but if he's dropped a cylinder, he's going to be falling out of that. So there he is. And here comes that second pack now by Robert Presley, John Andretti. Johnny Benson and others. All right, Jerry, what's the strategy that the Earnhardt team is thinking about? They're sitting here in the pits watching the television, watching the monitor. Here's what they're going to try to do. They've sent runners to other pits. They sent a runner to the 21 pits, a runner to the 29 pits, and they want Skinner to get up there. They'll have to get three or four cars. As Ned said earlier, you can't slingshot with one car, but with three or four, and Earnhardt leading that slingshot, they might have a shot at the front two. Here's Michael Walton trying to make a move on the outside of Steve Grissom. He just drove up there going into the turn, hoping that Mike Skinner might come with him, and it looks like Mike might do just that. Michael Spotter talking to Still him. Still there. Clear. Good job. Good job. The second position moved into fifth. We've had 14 different leaders and 25 lead changes in this event. Averaging about 115 miles an hour despite the red flag. Last lap turned at 161.3 by Sterling Marley. Here in the trial. Yeah. Well, he's trying to pick up the draft of that uh, Ernie Urban star down there on the other side. Look how far it is down to turn three. Long way down the back. Long way. Cranked up going down to the Another slow car coming up will be the toy. Big crash. There you see his car down on the inside. Had a great run going today, Derek Cook. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good. Seven cars in line here, but the seventh car, Mike Skinner, is not on the lead lap. So just the top six here are going for the win. Ted was sort of falling back. He and Dick Christmas are crashing together. Robert Presley and John Andretti and the others catch up to those two cars. Might have made gained a little bit while we were coming up on uh, Musgrave and Triple. 17 cars still on the lead lap. Getting on with it. That's not far from the from the qualifying pole speed here. It's just 
over 192 miles an hour. I have a feeling I had some bad information just a lap or two ago when I said it was 161. That's what my thing is showing, but I think that's probably 191. Yeah. yeah. Now we got a Pontiac running uh, 10 for Johnny Benson. Two Chevys, a Ford, another Chevy, and a Ford in the top five. Two and two and one in the second five. There are some things going through these guys' minds right now. What am I going to do? What do I need to do to win this race? Here's Presley going by Ted Musgrave. That's for the seventh position. And John Andretti will come along also and pass Ted Musgrave. Here comes Johnny Benson and Bobby Hamilton. Under Musgrave. They come down to complete lap number 180. Eight laps to go. Okay, they're making deals out there. It sounds like, Bob, from information that we're getting. And that is that Grissom says he'll go with Michael Walker. He don't have any choice but to go. He'd be foolish not to go with whoever makes a move up there because he's the last car on the lead lap in this pack. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, he'd, he'd go with him and try to help him out a little bit, try to get himself in another position. For those of you tuning in for the seniors' golf, Stay tuned because it'll be coming up in now seven laps. That from Las Vegas. We're running a little bit over because we had a red flag and had to repair the catch fence down in turn one, but we're seven, less than seven laps from the conclusion of this event. And as soon as we can, we'll wrap it up and send you to Las Vegas. Earnhardt looked high on Jarrett going into turn one. And now he looks high again as Jarrett looks low with Terry Labonte and they can't make a move. That four car is so strong that two of them together couldn't do it. Yep. Sterling Marlin won the race in July here at Talladega last year. Here's Jarrett trying to make a move on Labonte, trying to go for second. I wonder who Earnhardt's going to go with. Oh, he's going to go with the car that's going towards the front. You yeah. can rest assured. And then they will figure out later on what to do. Now there's Chevrolet to run side to side back there for a little bit as Earnhardt and Terry Labonte. That might hurt them. That might help Jared and uh, Sterling Marlin pull away. In fact, they've got about five or six car lengths here already. Those guys do not want to stay side to side for long. That will absolutely kill them. But on the other hand, you don't want to give up the position. Yeah, that's a little That's exactly to... right. Yeah. Clear. You're clear all around. Michael Walker Street, and he's clear. Here Labonte. comes Labonte right yep. back up there again. Boy, that's the best thing that can happen to Dale Jarrett and Sterling Marlin is for those guys to run side by side back there. I thought Shirley was going to drop in behind Earnhardt and uh, stand a better chance of catching the two. But no, they stay side by side, and that does give quite an advantage here on the late going to Sterling Marlin and Dale Jarrett. You're right, they can't afford to back off. Now, Earnhardt gets out in front of Terry Labonte, but Michael Walker there is on the inside of them. So, are they going to draft up? You've got to have two cars drafting together. I don't think Earnhardt can catch them by himself, and these cars back there racing side by side. And they're not going to help him any. Earnhardt, you see, has pulled away from them while they race side by side. Marlon and Jared are quite a ways up ahead as things go here at Talladega. Now they may get back in the line, but is it too late? Well, that's, I don't know. They got caught about uh, four more laps to go. Yep. It's 2.6 miles around. Now the leaders are coming up on some traffic. Although it's traffic that's running slow, Bobby Labonte's up there. Uh, he might be running fast enough. That's about the only chance I believe that Dale Jarrett might have is catch Sterling Marlin in traffic. These three cars down on the inside won't be a factor except to help these two cars we see on the screen pull away from Earnhardt and down behind them. 
but now they're going around those cars pretty pretty quickly. Bobby Labonte is up there running at a pretty good pace. Bobby is two laps down in 25th position. And now Jerry Labonte has caught back up to Dale Earnhardt, but you can see that Jarrett and Marlin, pretty good piece in front of them. Yep, and there's now three laps to go. Now they're going to catch uh, Kyle Denny and Bobby Labonte, who are running, running along at a pretty good clip. Sterling Marlin and Dale Jarrett, first and second. And here they come, up on those two, two cars. Bobby Labonte and Kyle Petty. That might be Jerry's only chance if he, if he can get himself in position when they pass those two cars is to get in front of Sterling Marlin because they said earlier, I just can't believe that one car can pull out and pass another slingshot like we saw years ago. And for Earnhardt and Labonte and Michael Waltrip and Steve Grissom, the time is running out. Two laps to go. Over five miles of competition to go, and now the two running up front. Dale Jarrett just trying to grab a draft on, on Kyle Petty, but Kyle moves down to the end of the side of the racetrack out of the way, and uh, the traffic is not going to be a factor. And now Earnhardt and the others are caught behind this traffic, momentarily at least. Ooh, some close racing Chuck Bowen. And Bobby and Labonte got awfully close together. There's Dale Earnhardt trying to catch a little bit of a toe off Kyle Petty. They yeah. come down through the trioval, and the white flag is about to wave for Sterling Marlin. Earnhardt has definitely gained on through that traffic situation. Here we go, the last lap. The white flag is showing. Sterling Marlin and Dale Jarrett go into turn number one, nose to tail. Dale Earnhardt, several car lengths behind, will probably not be a factor in the win. Although he and Lamonti have now hooked coming. up into the draft, and they may come close to Jarrett. Well, if they do, second. Jarrett, will, will, whichever way you feel Earnhardt's going to go, he's going to try to get in front of him to try to let him push him by. Now Jarrett. they move into turns three and four. Jared, if he can make a pass. Let's see if he can do it. They come on to the trioval. Doesn't look very good, Ned. No, it doesn't. I don't think he can do it. Marlin has a one car length advantage as they head for the line. There's the checkered flag. Sterling Marlin wins at Talladega with Dale Jarrett second and Dale Earnhardt. Terry Labonte finishing in fourth and Michael Waldron fifth. Here's John. Oh, big bucket of ice cold Gatorade going on Tony Glover. Well, Tony had to feel pretty good, huh? Oh, man, I'll tell you, it's great. Sterling drove his heart out. And Ryan, Glenn, Daryl, Jay, everybody in our motor room gave us a heck of a motor. Billy, all the guys at the shop, and Charlie Bruno, Mike Lawson, man, everybody here just gave me something great. I just watched this fun. Uh, how did that, how'd that shower feel there? That's pretty cold. You feel ice cold now? Pretty cold. <laughs> Tony Glover heads down to victory lane. Everybody uh, having a happy time down here in Sterling Marlins pit, Bob. It's Sterling's fifth career win. All have been on super speedways. Two at Daytona, two at Darlington, or rather one at Darlington, and two at Talladega. His first win of 96. Stay with us now, especially you uh, golf fans, because the senior PGA from Las Vegas is coming up in just a moment. We're going to try to get Sterling into a victory circle and get a quick word with him, and then we'll send you out to the golf. Great day, although we have had at least two drivers injured, Ricky Craven and Bill Elliott. We certainly hope that uh, their injuries will not be very serious and they can get back into the racing game just as quickly as possible. Checking the spoiler there, Ned. Yes, that's what they do on these uh, uh, high-speed restrictor plate tracks. They come in and check the spoiler to be sure that it's their right height. Second Chevy win of the seventh Chevy win of 96. Here are the unofficial results. Terry Labonte fourth, Michael Waltrip, great run for him along with Grissom, Presley, Musgrave had a great run, so did John Andretti, Johnny Benson, Bobby Hamilton, Wally Dow, all these guys just had tremendous races here this afternoon. There are 16 through 20, or 30 rather, and you can see that there were 16 cars on the lead lap when the checkered flag dropped. And the remainder of the unofficial results, Sterling Marlin, pulling the Kodak film Chevrolet into Victory Circle, having won 
and the 16th winner of the Winston Select 500 here at Talladega. And the win by Chevy ties them with Ford with most wins here at this facility. 14. Just as soon as he gets his helmet off, we will be sending it down to Dr. Jerry Punch and getting a quick word with Sterling Marlin in the winner's circle. Well, he won here last uh, July. Here's the McDonald's winner's circle interview with Dr. Punch. Sterling trying to get unhooked out here in Victory Lane, trying to get the earpieces out and uh, gets a big cold uh, bottle of Gatorade handed to him. We'll try to get his earpiece off and a big smile from the Kodak film driver. Hey, Sterling, how about that one, my friend? Great effort. Man, I tell you what, oh, with all these Kodak guys, uh, they done a great job. Runt standing right there, he built us a heck of a motor for this thing. And, uh, we felt like we left one laying on the table at Daytona and uh, that we come down here and test it and test it, test it, test it, probably run 1,200 miles. And uh, all the credit in the world goes to the Kodak crew. Thanks. You had to like the fact that you saw those guys racing side by side to three and the five and left you just to beat uh, Dale Jarrett. Yeah, it did. You know, when I saw him get back there uh, side by side, and I think it was four laps to go, I figured that we might could pull off and uh, get away from him. But if they ever got lined up, uh, there's going to be running 10 mile an hour fast when he got us. But it held off, and uh, man, we're just glad to be here. I tell you, it feels great. From the back to the front, three different times. Sterling Marlin picked up his first win of 1996, and he is the winner here at Talladega. Sterling Marlin wins at Talladega Super Speedway. And we head for Sonoma, California, Friday qualifying. Next Saturday night, the Featherlight Budweiser 200 at 12.30 a.m. Eastern. Then NASCAR today at 3.30 next Sunday and the Save Mart Supermarket 300 live at 4 o'clock Eastern time. For Ned Jarrett, Jerry Punch, John Curtin, and Bill Weber, I'm Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us. So long, everyone. Now to Jim Kelly and golf. Good news. Who won the pool? Who won the pool? Again. Jeez. I'm ready if you guys are. You're watching highlighted coverage of the Winston Select 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, the longest and fastest track on the NASCAR circuit. This is the ninth race of the 31 event schedule for 1996. We now move ahead in our coverage. Got it? Still rolling? Here we go. Welcome back to ESPN's highlighted version of the Winston Select 500, the ninth race of the 96th season from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. With the first half of the short track season completed, Dale Earnhardt moved into the points lead over Jeff Gordon. Dale Jarrett, who led the points for the first seven races, has dropped back to third. Ricky Craven and Terry Labonte completed the top five going into this event. We'll be back to the 2.6-mile trioval with turns banked at 33 degrees in just a moment. Thank you, see ya, good job, bye.